Welcome to Arlington, Texas. It's what we wait all summer for. The World Series begins with these two teams that have beaten the odds to get here. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the Texas Rangers all set for game one. And so here we go with this World Series that nobody saw coming. These were two of the worst teams in baseball just two years ago. They weren't a whole lot better last year. But these amazing turnarounds and then a couple incredible postseason runs. Come on in here, John Smoltz. You got the Texas Rangers, the Arizona Diamondbacks. One of the most improbable matchups we've ever had. It is going to be an interesting World Series. And I'll tell you what, the two teams had similar paths to getting here. And that's what has been the same. You think about what the Arizona Diamondbacks did out of the gate. Look where they finished. Look where the Rangers finished. Then both teams sweep their next two series. And then they improbable two games on the road to get to the World Series. But that's where it stops because they're going to go about getting it done in different ways. You got new age information, old school baseball, Arizona. Texas wants to slug their way to the championship. Yeah you had John as you mentioned two game sevens and two stars that did what their teams have done all season to win those games. You had the power of Adolis Garcia and the Rangers. You had the fast fearlessness of Corbin Carroll and the Diamondbacks. Well when you think about the Texas Rangers they're road warriors they've done this and run on the road but they did the last two games because Garcia caught fire after he got hit he struck out four times but then after that something clicked you see the numbers there. Without his home runs in those two games, I don't know if the Rangers get here. And on the other side, their dynamic player, Corbin Carroll, was no show for the first five games. But he showed up in the regular season. Look what he's done. He, he, he creates chaos when he gets on base. And his seventh game was the reason why the Arizona Diamondbacks are here in the World Series. Looking for their first title in more than two decades. Rangers looking for their first title ever. Stage is set. Game one of the World Series is next. Welcome to the Fall Classic. D-backs versus Rangers. This series has it all. Wow. Takes off. Arms, youth, experience. Don't blink. Enjoy the show. It's the World Series on Fox. It's always been there, from the first spark, that one flash of talent, and you just know, this kid is capable of magic. What they can do on the diamond, the ability to step in that batter's box, to take the ball in their hand, and change the game. That's rare company. What's my definition of success? Listening to what your heart says. But the when, well, that's something else entirely. Finding it in October, the fall classic. The moment you can't put words to, that's the magic. The Diamondbacks and the Rangers. Two unbelievable runs. Defying the odds, series after series. Playing the best baseball of their lives. Tonight in America's heartland, the improbable meets the impossible in the World Series. Game one starts now on Fox. Welcome to the 2023 World Series on Fox, presented by Capital One. And nothing like a little NF to get us jacked up for first pitch of the World Series. Down to the field we go. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Joe. Five years ago, Nathan Avaldi was supposed to start Game 4 of the World Series for the Red Sox. His legendary six-inning relief outing in Game 3 prevented that from happening. But tonight, he finally gets his first series start with a chance to make history. It's expanded playoffs, we know, but Evaldi could become the first pitcher to win five starts in a single postseason. Now over to Tom Verducci. 
Thanks, Ken. It's been a dream season for Corbin Carroll. In March, he signed a $111 million contract. In July, started the All-Star game in his hometown, Seattle. In September, the first rookie with 25 homers and 50 steals. And tonight, as he walks to the plate, he will become the youngest rookie to open a World Series in 99 years. Dream on. Joe. Game-changing, franchise-changing talent for these Arizona Diamondbacks. And he'll lead things off, followed by Cattell Marte, who's had a monster postseason, MVP of the championship series. And it's Gabriel Moreno, 23-year-old catcher, followed by Christian Walker. And Tommy Pham with Lourdes Gurriel in left field hitting sixth. Thomas Longoria and Perdomo round things out for Tori Lovello. Tonight's FanDuel live game, same, same game parlay. Uh, Christian Walker, they need to get going. And Adolis Garcia, that feels like a safe bet the way things have gone in this postseason. One man wrecking ball in that championship series. Now on the mound for these Texas Rangers is a guy, John, who they got with a big game reputation. He has more than lived up to it so far. Yeah, he sure has. He's on attack mode from the very first pitch. He'll throw a lot of strikes. When he gets in trouble, he uses split finger, but he has four pitches that he goes to. That four-seam fastball, splitter, cutter, curveball. Look, it's strength against strength in tonight and in the World Series. It's going to be he control the running game. Can you get the guys off the bases for Arizona who create havoc? Four starts in this postseason. He's gone at least six innings in all of them. He's won all of them. And a 2.42 ERA for the 33-year-old from Elvin, Texas. Corbin Carroll stands in, and off we go in game one with a fastball and a foul ball. Guy that pounds the zone against a very aggressive lineup here in Arizona. Yeah, the one thing, if you're not familiar with the Arizona Diamondbacks, you might be surprised that they do not strike out that much. They put the ball in play. They create a lot of 90 feet. You're going to hear that a lot. 90 feet. They want to take those 90 feet. And that is 90 feet on the bases. If they get on first, they want to steal. They want to make the Texas Rangers play as fast as possible. And that's what the Diamondbacks have done leading into this World Series game. Evaldi rocks and fires. And there's a split. It grounded along first. With the speed of course. They're a tight play, but Evaldi's there. One gone in this first inning. One of the reasons the Rangers have had the season that they've had is this group. One of the best defensive teams in baseball. All those guys in the outfield have good arms against this good running game that Arizona possesses. On the infield, Josh Young, fantastic at third. Corey Seager's a Gold Glove finalist. So is Simeon. So is Lowe. So is Heim. They've got five Gold Glove finalists in this defense. One gone in the first inning, and here comes Cattell Marte. Pop up, foul ground. Heim will not have room. How about the start to this postseason for Marte? I know that Carroll takes a lot of the headlines, but this guy feels like he's just as important. Yeah, he's been uh, very good, as you see the average, and been very good against right handed pitchers when it comes to strikeouts and walks. And he's got virtually the same, and that's a rarity in the game. But he is uh, Mr. Clutch for them this year. On this 0 1 from the Valley, swings and misses. And it's 0 and 2. Marte started his postseason career on a 16 game hitting streak. Well, there's the splitter, and if it's going good, there's going to be a lot of swings and misses like this, even against a team that prides themselves at putting the ball in play. Look, I, there's so much to talk about in this, this World Series and these two matchups. This is going to be a really, really good and well played World Series. Here's an 2 It is a splitter taken away. First ball that Evaldi's thrown. That splitter and that curveball, John, absolutely untouchable so far this postseason. He's had good feel for it, and it, and it rightfully so. When you get ahead of every hitter you're facing, you on the attack, and you put the hitter on the big time defense. Here's one two. Is hacked down the line foul. Just make no mistake about this. Neither team is scared. <laughs> They've won um, heroic games on the road, and they feel comfortable on the road. And the Diamondbacks are here to show why these last 10 to 15 games is a new look Diamondbacks. Another one, two, taken low. Yeah, you know both these teams are fearless. If you didn't know it going into last weekend, you know it now. With both going on the road, down 3-2, and winning game six, winning game seven. 
The tour of Lavelle and the Diamondbacks. It's to get to their first World Series since they won it in 2001. Rangers here for the first time in 12 years. Try to win their first in franchise history. A 2 2. A ground to the first and a couple plays right away from Nathaniel Lowe. The pitcher profile sponsored by Google Pixel. And his first season with the Rangers, he was excellent during the regular season. All star for the first time. And, you know, he was hurt late in the season. They didn't know what they were going to get for him down the stretch because he struggled in September. But he's shown up in October and taken it to another level. Pre All star, he was 10 and 3. Then you mentioned the injury, and it took him a while to get going. He didn't do any rehab starts. They may have uh, wanted to do that over, but he is definitely locked in right now. Comes on to get the arena with a fastball at 97, ball one. Well, this young man has come into his own. He is a very, very patient hitter, but one with big hits in the postseason. Latest to those, one game seven. And you ready to see that. Big hit after big hit. Just 23 years old. He's the guy they got in the winter from Toronto and made the team out of spring training because of an injury to Carson Kelly. He was elite defensively right away, but that bat has just gotten better and better to the point where suddenly he's their three hitter in the World Series. Yeah, he loves hitting ahead in the count, especially off of right handed hitters. That's why he's patient and he looks for his pitch to drive when he's ahead of the count. The only problem he gets from time to time is the breaking ball. You saw the breaking ball right there. He didn't expand the zone. You know, it's crazy those in this postseason three home runs all against breaking balls nasty splitter right there two and two. This one drops off the table that thing looks like a fastball the whole way and you're seeing it from the hitters view just disappears. Slider has uh, got some miles per hour added to it than the last game he pitched. So you know he's pumped up. 91 mile an hour on his slider. Comes back home with a payoff. And the bottom falls out again. One, two, three, first inning for Nathan Avaldi. Rangers come to bat when you come back. Again in the postseason, Simeon and Seeger at the top, and then it's the 21-year-old rookie Evan Carter, Adolis Garcia, MVP of the championship series. Garver and Hine coming off a couple good games in Houston with Low, Young, and Tavares to finish things up. And they face off with the ace of the Diamondbacks, Zach Gallen, who's really looking at a second chance here after he gave up nine runs and 11 innings in the championship series, which was jarring to see. This guy was 11 and three prior to the All-Star break. Started the All-Star game for the National League. Has not been the same in the second half. Certainly didn't look the same in Philly. How does he find his footing for the biggest start of his life, Jeff? Well, redemption is how you start, and you just need to be better with the location. He has every pitch to silence this high-powered offense. He did it in the regular season against them. But the location, when your arm maybe be a little tired and you throw in a lot of innings, sometimes the location suffers. He has five pitches he can go to. Watch the curveball and changeup combination to be successful if Zach goes deep in the game. First man that he faces, Marcus Simeon, watches a strike on the outside corner. The Rangers are able to beat the Astros even though they didn't get hardly anything from Simeon until the last game or two. 192 in this postseason for the guy that led the league in hits. On this 1-1 one -one pitch, fouls it off 1-2. and two. To face Simeon, you've got to keep the ball away. If you make a mistake middle in, that's where his power is. He's a pull hitter and loves to pull the baseball. And you see Zach Gallen was a little frustrated with that cutter missing in the middle of the zone. See what he goes with on this one two. It's a change and it's pulled softly to Perdomo. It's short for the first shot. And we talked about the Rangers defense. The Diamondbacks defense excellent as well. This outfield can really run. The arm's not as good but those guys can cover a lot of ground. So Perdomo make that play left side of the infield with the veteran Evan Longoria. Marte and a gold glover and Walker at first and a gold glove finalist in Gabriel Moreno behind the plate. One gone in this first inning, and here is the former World Series MVP, Corey Seager, better than ever, here in his second season in Texas. Takes high ball one. 
Well, for Zach Gallen and for Avaldi on their non fastball pitches, they give up a lot of ground balls. So early on, we've seen three ground balls between the two of them to keep the infield busy. Would be a good thing for each team. Off it. Cuts that one inside. Two and zero. He can elevate the fastball, and he will do that against the Rangers. If you're going to beat the Rangers, you've got to have top of the fastball strike, and then your secondary stuff has to miss below the strike zone. And both are where Gallon's sweet spot is when he's right. Seager hit a first inning home run in Game Seven. Is ahead, three balls and no strikes. And how about the emotion that he showed after that tone-setting home run that even caught his teammates off guard? Yeah, his teammates loved it. It's not in his DNA to do that very often. He will swing three and zero if this pitch is close. Let's see. It is a perfect pitch, and it's three and one. Yeah, you got to leave those away when it's three and zero to a hitter. He's looking middle to middle end to try and do damage, and he painted the outside part on a three-zero count. On this 3 1, Seeger fouls it off his hands and the count goes full. Corey Seeger probably going to finish runner up to Shohei Otani for American League MVP. And he put the full picture together in this postseason. He's right behind Adolis Garcia, MVP for the Rangers this October. I would not be surprised to see a 3 2 change up if he's got as good a feel on that pitch. He went to the curveball and walked him. Umpiring crew for game one. DJ Rayburn's World Series debut typically has a tighter strike zone. Crew chief Bill Miller down the right field line with his six man crew. Go from double A to hitting third in the World Series in a two month span. And John, we've seen this entire stretch for the Rangers. This guy looks like he doesn't even realize he's in the big leagues, like he thinks he's just playing in his backyard in Tennessee. Completely unfazed. Yeah, he's been amazing, and nothing has caught him off guard. He said he's having the time of his life. He does not chase too many pitches out of the strike zone. I cannot emphasize how hard that is for a young player to be that disciplined and he only swings about nine percent outside the strike zone. Think about how many pitches he sees and that's a low number outside the zone. You've got to be doing something good and you find yourself with Mickey Mantle on your graphic. He's the youngest dude to hit third in the World Series since Mantle did it in 1952. This is already a good offense, but then he came up in early September where they were struggling some. That was right after Zach Gallen shut him down in late August, and he helped get him going again. On this 1 1 pitch, Carter watches ball two. Well, the big thing for him next year, I would anticipate he's going to play every day, and he's going to face the left handers that this year he wasn't able to face as much. And he's only going to get better and better at learning on the job in the highest pressure moments of his life. Seagard first one gone first inning. Here's a 2 1. Carter shoots it foul and it's 2 and 2. It's out of a tiny town in Tennessee, Elizabethan, Tennessee, where not many teams knew about him. In fact, on draft night, a lot of the people said, wait a minute, who? Who did they take in the second round from that quiet corner of Tennessee? But a mad dash through the minors. Started this season in double A, ends it in the World Series. On this 2 2 from Gallon. Carter hits a Baltimore chop along first and foul. Well, both of these clubs have had tremendous success when they score first. Matter of fact, they're both undefeated. So it's a race to who scores first in this series if those trends keep going. The Rangers and Arizona did a nice job when they got the lead, they won every game. It's a lot of similarities between these two clubs. You know, the long droughts coming in. This is what you're mentioning here. First one to one wins. You know, first team to score wins. They both had great first halves. They both faded in the second half, only to find it here in October. And where they're much different is stylistically offensively. These Rangers can match 20 runs over the last two games of the championship series. Carter, the right center field. That's going to split the gap and hit off the wall. Seager read it well. He heads for the plate, and it's Evan Carter, 21 years old, starting the scoring in the World Series.
He's got such a simple approach. Watch how solid his hands are connected, and he gets the barrel to the bat and splits the gap. He doesn't have any wasted movement at the plate, and he's cool. I mean, he's so cool that this team is going to get to know him for a long time if he stays healthy. And now it's Adolis Garcia. I don't think it was possible for these fans to love Adolis Garcia any more than they already did. But no player has embraced the chaos and the intensity of the postseason quite like this guy, who is one RBI shy of the all time postseason record. On this 1 0 pitch, takes a strike in the outside corner, and it's 1 and 1. Must see TV right here, John. Yeah, he is the one player, probably the highest emotional player for Texas by far. And boy, did they play off of it in the last two games on the road in Houston. Yeah, leaned into the booing that he was hearing there. Wrecking ball, five home runs and 13 knocked in over the last four games of that championship series. And uh, not only would they love to have him set a record, they would love to erase the guy that holds it. David Freeze against the Rangers in 2011. They're running the bank on the Carter double. He's at second with one out on this 2-1. Garcia takes ball three. Well, early on, uh, Gallon has been so good with two strikes. Lead off batters and two strikes. Why is that important in the postseason? Because that takes a lot of stress off of you. And all three plate appearances so far going into this one had with two strikes the, of course the big two strike double and the Rangers have a lead so if the trend continues Gallon needs to make those two strike pitches like he did all year for the most part that made him dangerous. How hard is the goalie swinging here if he gets a pitch to him. Yeah. Well his manager doesn't want to see his first at bat have huge swings so he looks a little more locked in in his first at bat. Carter dancing off second. Allen to Garcia with a 3 1 pitch. Lines right, base hit left field. Carter can fly. He heads home. It's 2 to nothing, Texas. I would say he was locked in. Very controlled, short to the ball. We've seen him big. Get really big with his swings. There's a breaking ball right down the middle and see how connected he was to it. And two solid contacts now in a row. Given the Rangers a 2 0 lead. They've got a lot of former players here, and Mr. Beltre likes that 2 0 lead. Look, both teams are similar in this regard, but they do it differently, as you mentioned. They both can score in bunches. The Rangers just happen to do it with slug, where Diamondbacks have many other components to do it. Two nothing Rangers. We go down to Ken Rosenthal. Evan, you saw a lot of fastballs in that at bat. What was your thought process? You got the two strikes. Yeah, um, you know he, he beat me a little bit right there in a couple of fastballs, so I definitely didn't want to be late on anything else. Just trying to be a little early right there. What's it like playing in your first World Series? I'm fired up, man. This is awesome. So much fun. Evan, thanks a lot. Joe, back Thank to you. you. Yeah, it's been what it's been like since the day got caught up in early September, folks. Here's Mitch Garver, and there's ball one. Moreno keeps it in the area. All right, if you're Zach Gallon here, John, you get hit in the mouth and you're coming off two bad outings, what do you do? Well, the, the one thing you can't do is press. And the other thing you have to remember is it's game one of the World Series and you got to give your team some length. And you have to pitch some innings because you don't want to go to the bullpen that early, even though it's a long series. Game one, if he goes four or five innings, that would be the, the mindset you got to have right now. Mitch Garver, who has quietly been key for this lineup, he's knocked in 11 and 10 games this postseason. Even though he didn't play in the first round, that's problems in the three spots, problems at DH, and so Bruce Bochy put him in, and he hit a grand slam in his first game. You know, when he's hitting, John, when Himes hitting, this lineup gets really long. It does, and when it disappears, the top of the order doesn't get on base, right? We've seen this from Simeon and and Seeger go through their stretches and now that the bottom of the order especially the last couple games were so good for Texas they have 
They have the strangest offense, I think, all year of domination and disappearing. And they're just hoping they continue to dominate enough in innings. They don't have to score in five different innings. Sometimes the two innings they score in is enough. One, two to Garber is chop left side. There's Longoria, the second for one. And the first, not in time. Walker saying, I don't know, as the dugout looks for his opinion, should they challenge? Looked like they may have gotten him live, but I think they did get him live. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get our first challenge of this World Series. Arizona is challenging the safe call at first base. This one shouldn't take too long. Look, the Diamondbacks, as uh, we get a chance to look at this Zoom review, look at the, oh, man, could you imagine being right in there right now, just checking out all those You'd like angles? that gig, oh, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Diamondbacks already walking off of the field. Yeah, and this 26 pitch first inning for Zach Gallon is going to come to an end, but not without damage. Rangers score two runs. And you're talking about how streaky they've been this year. When they get going, After look review, out. The call in the field is overturned. The runner is out. Arizona will retain their challenge. So after scoring 20 runs over the last two games to the championship series, the Rangers are right on Zach Gallon in the first inning of the World Series. Two to nothing, Rangers in front. Well, T-Mobile wants you to win tickets to a game next season. Text PREDICT to 595959 by the start of the third inning for a chance to up your game. Adolis Garcia knocks in his 21st run of the postseason, now tied for the all-time postseason record. And they've given Nathan Avaldi an early 2-0 lead. Goes back to work. Christian Walker leads off. And if the Diamondbacks are going to be able to score with the Rangers in this series, John, they got to get Christian Walker going. Yeah, they really do. And every player, uh, every team has a player or two that go through the funk. And the regular season wouldn't be that big deal. But the postseason... You need it to last a little shorter than what sometimes it goes through and players go through it and right now Walker's going through it. This guy had 33 home runs during the regular season drove in more than 100. 179 though during the postseason. One of his last 15. Devaldi fires. And it's one and two. Curveball and sliders with two strikes. He's really expanded his own. And can you get that day off and and mechanics and work in BP and get more in tune with what your regular season eye was? Easier said than done when you're getting asked the question all the time. And certainly uh, they're excited they're here, but they need Walker to hoist the trophy. Guy that led him in home runs during the regular season. He's hit 30 plus in three of the last four. 32 years old in his fifth full year, Christian Walker. Leading off this second against Steve Yeah, and okay. taking one of those breaking pitches you were talking about. Yeah, real good sign so far. I mean, those are the pitches, again, when you're trying to chase and catch up and you're out of your mechanics, you're going to swing at these pitches. And what Evaldi does with 3 2, sometimes you go to that split, look like a fastball, and he's gotten some swing and miss out of it. See what he goes to on 3 2. It is back to a fastball and like a house by the side of the road. Walker takes strike three. Well, oh, this is just vintage Evaldi. He does not walk many batters, and he doesn't strike out a ton, which tells you, therefore, he's in the strike zone and getting a lot of contact, which you don't mind. He does not mind to pitch the contact. Here comes the Tommy Pham. Yeah, especially in this postseason, he has just pounded the zone. And he's at a point, John, now we're talking about all these different pitches that he throws. He is so unpredictable. I mean, he, one game, like last game, it was the fastball. He's leaned down the splitter a little bit here. Throws it right there. And again, is ahead 0 2. But that's the beauty of having feel for your pitches. And he has feel for all three of his pitches that he could throw at any time and any count. But when you're pounding your fastball for strikes and the hitters are not taking you, uh, not aggressively getting after you first pitch. Wow. That's what happens. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Third consecutive K for Avaldi.
He's a confident pitcher to say the least, but some guys in the postseason allow their stuff to elevate. And I don't mean elevate as in height. I'm talking about velocity uptick, crispness on their secondary pitches. He's not afraid of the moment and he's not afraid to fill up the strike zone. Those are two really kind of big criteria to have success, especially throughout the entire postseason. That dude we saw in the replay is not afraid of anything either. Getting Halloween started early, whatever that pink outfit was. Strike on Guriel. Diamondbacks looking for their first base runner against Duvaldi. And they got a guy here who started to heat up towards the end of that championship series in Guriel. Two. He's been 0 2 on five of the first six hitters. Uh, he, he does it. <laughs> That's, he was mad because he missed his location by a foot. But his velocity was so good that he got away with it. He was trying to pound the fastball in to set up what I believe would be a third consecutive strikeout on a split. Goes back up with the fastball. Ten career starts in the postseason for Evaldi, his team. Nine and one in those ten starts. But as Kenny told you, his first World Series start here tonight. Home with another 0 2. Strikes out the side. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Taco Bell. Still a base, still a taco is back. And we are back at Globe Life Field here in Arlington, Texas, where the Rangers didn't waste any time getting on the board. Two runs in the first inning against Zach Gallen. And Jonah Hine to lead off the second. All star catcher who came to life the last two games in Houston. Home run in game six, two hits in game seven. This is a well rounded player right here. Yeah, he sure is. Catching every game down the stretch, like 50 in a row, it seems like, but had some off days to do. He has not had success against Gallen in his brief. Tangle with him. He's 0 for with a lot of strikeouts. And Gallen, when he's on, his low strike zone, that low fastball, they don't do anything against it. That brings in the changeup and the curveball. Target set up for an 0-2. Heim gets to it and stays alive. You mentioned what he did to these Rangers during the regular season. Two starts, 17 Ks to just one walk. Are you able to take much from that? Yeah, you would think. I mean, those are good videos to watch because you, you, you know it's a regular season. Bounce it a second. Easy one for Marte. And the first out of the second inning. We're talking about this improbable matchup. At the end of last season, the World Series odds were 125 to 1 for Arizona. They were 50 to 1 for Texas. And how about the fact that even at the beginning of the playoffs this year, Arizona was still 40 to 1. Uh, I'm just telling you, um, this year, I I'm just going to go on record and say it. If, if Arizona wins the World Series, it'll be the greatest. And that's including the American yeah. Mets, and I get it, but it'll be the greatest World Series championship from the most unlikely ways that they got here and did it and to some degree Texas will have that same path. I mean we've talked about it we followed them we've seen this team not blink we've seen them take punch after punch they had to go from the one end of the country to the other end of the country on the last day losing one to nothing and then both teams have just knocked off division champs yeah and and done it in the in a in a Golly, just having been there and having done it, these are the two most interesting journeys to get to the World Series. One two pitch to low it is inside. There have been some comparisons, John, to the 91 World Series where your Braves and the Twins both went worse to first, but that was a much shorter path once you got to October. Very much shorter path. And, and certainly that one turned into an epic World Series. And I think this has a chance to be a really great World Series as well. Soft bouncing ball to second. Marte over the first two plays of this inning. This is actually the anniversary of that epic game seven. You and Morris dealt late and then the one nothing win in ten innings on Gene Larkin's hit. It's the anniversary of the game six. Rangers fans don't need any details on what game six was. They would love to have that memory wiped away as their most recent in the World Series. 
And uh, this park has hosted a postseason before the 2020 COVID postseason was played here. It was pretty much empty at that point. Of course, the Rangers weren't there. Here's the rookie, third baseman Josh Young, taking a strike. It has been a uh, season of checking boxes for this guy. First opening day roster, first All Star game. Now gets to play in his first World Series. And he's behind him too. Well, now you're seeing what Zach Gallon does when he is on his game. He moves the baseball around, changes speeds, and he doesn't miss his spots. Lately in the postseason, he has missed his spots. It has cost him. It will always cost pitchers at this time because the attention to detail is so heightened by everybody. Nobody takes in a bat off, a pitch off. They're all locked in. You know, with Gallon especially, John, I mean, when he's right, fastball command command of his pitches that's his number one quality it is and that's what got him off to a 10 and one start I mean you're talking about a guy that was trying to run away for the Cy Young and and certainly the last two starts have not been an indicator of that and he's had a long season pitched 210 innings and he and trust me he's grinding right now to figure that out mechanically to get locked back into the location another 0 2 young and is a good curve to get him swinging and he bounces back to the two run first with a one two three second we're back after a word from your local Fox station yes yep Let's go yeah 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 Pitch hit and run is the free official MLB skills competition for baseball and softball players ages 7 to 14. Go to pitchhitrun.com to get more information. That is strike one. I feel like a broken record with yeah. Nathan Avaldi in strike one. As he deals to Alec Thomas at the bottom of the D-backs order. Six up and six down. Four consecutive Ks. Down the line foul and again and two. Well, and two is a theme. And uh, speaking of which, this young man, he's a big part of why there in the World Series his clutch home run and the four home runs that he's able to hit it takes a big swing he's got some speed covers a lot of ground in the outfield he's one of the guys that you and I were talking before you got a circle to keep off the bases 23 year old Alec Thomas on an 2 he got to that splitter and he's nestled it over the mound they won't keep him off the bases he puts it in play and uses his speed to make it no chance for Seager you and I were talking about what yeah. do you do as a pitcher when you're looking at the lineup you usually circle the guys who don't want to beat you with the bat and in this case the way the Diamondbacks play baseball you got to circle the guys to keep off the bases so it doesn't drive you crazy because of their ability to steal they don't always have to steal to be successful but if they get on base and specifically here lead off now he has to worry about two things his speed and the hitter it just helps the hitter get better pitches. And this is where the Diamondbacks are at their best doesn't necessarily mean that they're running first pitch always but they put the pressure on Longoria shoots a base hit the other way and that's back to back hits to open this third Garcia throws behind Thomas who's in there safely now the one thing to watch for as this series materializes the the Diamondbacks do not have considered great arms in the outfield whereas you just saw one of the dynamic arms and they'll take the extra 90 bases 90 feet but not in a case where they're going to test really really good arms and you saw Thomas right there looked like he was going to and stopped but a good start to the bottom of their order And another one of those guys, John, that has found a new level in this postseason in Geraldo Perdomo. We're going to see a bunt. Oh, see baby. A bunt. Buckle up, John. It is a bunt from the guy that did it more than anybody in the regular season, and it's executed well. They sacrificed more than anybody. You know, game seven was kind of a snapshot of what this team does. They ran like crazy. Two of the four runs in game seven scored on productive outs, and they got the go ahead run moved into scoring position by doing that. Yeah, that's why I said in the open they've got new age information, but they play old school baseball. So they combine the both, and they, they don't want to necessarily just give you an out, but in situations like that, they will bet that their guy at the plate definitely going to put the ball in play, will get the ball on the ground and score a run and cut the deficit up. Tying run in scoring position. Back to the top of the order in Corbin Carroll. Yeah, Tori Lavello said, I mean, 
Like, some people look at the Diamondbacks and say, oh, I like them because they play small ball. Lavello says, I don't like to play small ball. Like you said, I don't like to give outs away, but I realize this time of year, there are times where it is the right play. Carroll has a great pitch and the Philadelphia Phillies in the previous series were pounding Carroll in and they were having success. This is an unhittable pitch. And so now with two strikes he will have to battle and find the barrel of the bat to put the ball in play. Here it comes Carroll swats a ball to center field Tavares won't get there and it gets by him and buckle up the speed of Carroll on his way to third. He's tied the game with a two run triple. And that is a better way to explain it by seeing the evidence of it. They just do these kind of things better than most. They put it in play. They're really good with runners in scoring position. And he hit a great pitch. Well, maybe a little bit higher than that split that he wanted it to. But nonetheless, he got it in play, guaranteed one run. Now it's two runs, and now they're standing with a man on third with less than two outs. This is the Diamondback way. We saw the Ranger way, and that's why I think this battle, this postseason World Series, is going to be tight all the way through every game. And that is the other thing that they led baseball in, triples. Nobody had more of them than Corbin Carroll. One of the things they started calling the Diamondbacks this summer was the answer backs. At first it was anytime somebody would score against him, it seemed like the bottom half of the inning they'd have an answer, but then it became these comeback wins. They were fourth in the majors in comeback wins. And in this postseason, John, more than half of their wins have been comeback. Well, I mean, they're fearless, and they went through a growing part of the season when they weren't very good. And their young players had to grow up a little bit, as their manager put it, and they've gotten to this place now where they're not playing young anymore. Got off to a fast start in the regular season, then hit the skids. Until Marte takes high. And they're in first place by three games over the Dodgers on July 1st. Last three months, though, Torre the Velo said the youth showed up a little bit. They didn't handle that success well. And we're 10 games below 500 for the final three months. In the dirt. And that might have caught the home plate umpire's shin guard to keep Carroll down at third. And maybe getting a little bit of help there. And shot at another bunt attempt, and it did. Carroll doesn't need but a sliver. Well, this is, I mean, I don't know if he'll do it again, but this is such an undefendable play if it's called basically a safety squeeze. And the 2 0 count, you won't see it. But what that terminology is, you square around, the, the runner reads you squaring around, you place it in a place where it cannot be defended, and you score a run. Now, this guy's so good, he can score it in so many different ways because he handles the bat as good as anybody on their team. Carroll tied it with a triple. He's at third, a 2 1. Marte. Ball good take, ball three. There'll be four. Corbin Carroll is the guy. This was the guy that the Diamondbacks were building around. He signed a couple long term contracts, 30 years old in his ninth year. And after a bad year last year, his resurgence this year is important as anything for them. Digs that one out, grabs it to first, Will comes home, and he's saved from the Diamondbacks' lead. Heim says, I don't know about that. But as the call is now, it's 3 to 2 Arizona. I thought he had zero chance. When we get a look at how Carroll goes about his lead and momentum, watch this. Here comes the pitch, and he's anticipating a swing and takes off. Now, I didn't think they had a chance to get him. It was a great throw or a great try, and we'll see if the tag was put on as he slides. I don't think it, it was. And a huge run for the Diamondbacks. But what a great job at third base, anticipating and going. That's what you have to do when the infield's back. That's the one thing early in the series against Philadelphia. The Diamondbacks did not exactly run the bases great. Yeah, they're, I mean, their M.O. kind of disappeared, right? They didn't have any stolen bases over the first five games before they had eight over the last two. And John, I think an on-target throw here probably gets him. It, 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 it was amazing how hard the ball was hit, but I still didn't think he had a chance. And these are the kind of plays that you got to be real sure. 
Because not only did you not get the out at home, which you were hoping to, normally those plays, the first baseman's a little further in than the rest of the defense. They were giving up a run on a ground ball. But he decided to come home. Carroll ties it with a two-run triple and scores the go-ahead run. Marte is at first as this 1-1 comes home to Moreno after throw over. Early in the game, it's so hard to just take the out. If the infield's in, you understand it. But early in the game, I know one of the best of all time, Greg Maddox, who's here tonight, he says, give me that out. I just want to stay away from the huge inning. Wouldn't you say that's an example of what Tori Lavelle told us? The MO of this offense is they want to speed up the game that's on right. defense, put the pressure on. That's exactly right. But you can't do that without doing these kind of things. And I talked about the three plus run innings. You see how it's it's equal, but they do it differently. Here's the one two. There goes Marte swing and a miss. Still from Hallam was offline on a stolen base for Marte. So in this inning, you got a triple, you got a stolen base, you got a sacrifice. And Arizona's got another man in scoring position, and America's just scored a free taco. Unload your Doritos Loco, Locos Tacos only in the app when you sign up for Taco Bell Rewards. Do we qualify for that? Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, all right. You can see another big jump and a rare swing and miss from Moreno. That's two strikeouts out of him. And two out for Walker. Struck out his first time. We talk about this speed and uh, the relative small ball Arizona plays. They've had home runs come around in this postseason, though, to supplement that all. So we're an average home run hitting team during the regular season. And you ask the question, can a team that's in the you know, middle of the bottom of the pack when it comes to home run, can they win it all? Because no team has as a below average home run hitting team since the Kansas City Royals in 2015. They weren't during the regular season, these guys, but they have been during the postseason. Well, you know, when you're doing your research, you find out certain things, you go, hmm, I had no idea. Not because you're not paying attention, there's certain things sneak up, and they're the fourth most runners in scoring position in baseball. And a lot of that has to do with their doubles they hit and their stolen bases. They get to second base, the fourth most in baseball, and that's why they're here. One, two from Mavaldi. Christian Walker takes out shot. And they've done something that nobody's been able to do through the first four starts against Uvaldi, and that is score more than one run in an inning. He had given up seven runs over his first four starts. That is seven tin soldiers. Now 2-2. Two -two. Walker takes ball three. And the other thing they've done is made Avaldi really work hard. It started with the 7-8-9 of the order and nothing. Four straight strikeouts leading into this inning. And all of a sudden, shock, 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 and... Arizona's got the lead. 23rd pitch of this inning is a payoff to the powerful Walker. And it's swung on a miss. He finished him off with a splitter. Arizona does what they've done all year. Little D-backs magic to take the lead in game one. Bottom of the order tees it up. Top of the order takes advantage. It's 3-2 in game one. Well, you can see why they love him in Arizona. And you figure baseball fans across the country can love him soon. <laughs> Nine one and two for the Rangers in this third. A strike on Tavares, who was one time top prospect himself that got to the big leagues a few years ago. Struggled his first couple of years, but has found his footing this year and continued that into a good postseason, helping set the table for those big dogs that will follow him and Simeon and Seeger. That changeup has given him fits. The right handed change up against his. You see that finish of just almost a sawed off swing. He is not picking up that fade. Looks like a fastball coming in and fades away. Ball and two strikes. 
It's a pitch that used to be his fastball. Zach Gallon was a little kid pitching in New Jersey. Grip it with almost his full hand and rip it. And he's used that same grip. Throws it as hard as he can. Just kind of deadens it with the way he holds it. It's been a good changeup for him. Turns it back up with the fastball and it's two and two. It's out of Gibbsboro, New Jersey. Over North Carolina Tar Heel traded a couple times after the Cardinals drafted him before he established himself and established himself he has one of the top pitchers in the league the last couple of years he has his second K one gone in his third baseball fans your phone upgrade is on deck with the freedom to upgrade every year with go 5G next and up your game with T-Mobile well what his team just did is give him a just a shot of adrenaline when you give up two runs in the first inning in a World Series game and you start going oh no in your head and your team course scores three oh, what a feeling to get the lead again strike on Simeon especially when you're coming off getting bludgeoned the way he did yeah I mean he looks obviously much different after the first inning and you get a little bit of those nerves out of the way pop fly down the line Carroll's coming out and looks didn't think for uh, he sees it. Uh, it falls harmlessly there. So it's 0 2 on Simeon and starts Saturday strong with big noon Saturday. Dylan Gabriel leads sixth ranked Oklahoma in a showdown on the road against the Jayhawks. All starting with big noon kickoff from Lawrence at 10 a.m. And then Oklahoma, Kansas, noon Eastern on Fox. Two from Gallon to Simeon is outside, which is where everybody has pitched Marcus Simeon this postseason. He's a very pole heavy hitter, and it's not shown a willingness to adjust to that. Got one inside here, but swung over it. It's a disappearing changeup, and back to back K's to open the third. Well, this is the key for him. I said his curveball changeup, if it's working, it was going to be a great compliment against this offense. Early on, they attacked. And got in some hittable counts, even though with two strikes they were able to get a couple hits. When he's throwing his changeup and curveball, and a lot of times you'll see the curveball followed by a changeup, but right now he's got the power changeup working. Got the power hitter at the inside. plate and a cutter inside to Corey Seeger. On walk that Gallon issued is against Seeger his first time. Did you get it? There's a piece of equipment there. Looks like we're all set. All the way to the back of that box. The hitting robot, baseball robot, Corey Seeger. Another nasty changeup. One ball, one strike. There wasn't many swings and misses in the first inning, zero. And now they're getting a bunch of them. That's a good sign for Zach Gallon. They struck out three straight. Let's go. Seager took this change and it's two and one. This guy's faced off a fair amount when Seager's with the Dodgers. And an MVP of the World Series in this ballpark. Okay. Three and one. Seager at 400 in that World Series win for LA over Tampa Bay. And he's taken it to another level with these Rangers this year. On this 3 1, Seeger oh, takes ball four. ball four in his second walk of the game. Let's go down to Tom Verducci. Yeah, adrenaline is a wonderful thing in the World Series. Zach Gallon feeling it. That first inning averaging 95 and a half on his fastball. By far the highest first inning velo of the season, but cost him location. Three pitches, fastballs to Evan Carter. Basically the same spot you've seen him here now go more to his secondary pitches last seven outs all in the secondary stuff Never Carter who you mentioned takes first pitch change up for a strike I mean I hear you talk about how the postseason is different How do you harness that pulse especially for a guy pitching in his first World Series game? Yeah, it's 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 definitely different I mean you some say getting to the World Series might be some of the toughest games you pitch, but now you know the whole world's watching it's down to two teams and Especially for Zach, he wants to continue 
on this path because he feels like I'm sure he let his team down one of the top pitchers in the league and he wants redemption and he's got a chance now being up three to two. Let's go over one one to Carter. He punches it down the line. It finds a hole in the left. Seager makes the turn. Heads for four. Williams throws late and Carter's in the second. Rangers pushing the envelope on the bases. Second and third with two out. Well, it's what I said earlier on. They're going to challenge the arms of every outfielder that Arizona has. And when you see this live, you're like, uh oh, I don't know if he's going to get there. But he was going the entire way. You don't want to make the third out at at third ever. And Seeger gets in there. That is a double for Carter, his second of his first World Series game. Tying run at third, go ahead run at second. The man, the myth, the legend, Nadolis Garcia fouls off the first pitch. Picked up right where he left off in the championship series in his first World Series at bat, tying David Freeze for the most RBIs in a single postseason. 21 of them with a full series ahead still. Gallon's 0 1 going upstairs, missing by the hands. That's where you've got to get Garcia. It has to be at the top of that line where the fastball looks good and his swing gets bigger. But if the ball's down, and especially breaking ball, we saw him lace that for a hit. No park holds this guy when his swing is short. On this 1 1 pitch, Garcia bends back on ball two. See it on up camera presented by T Mobile. Second and third, two away, two one pitch. Garcia takes right down the middle. Mm. Two and two. A little two out burst here from the Rangers. Postseason crumbles some, launches others. It has launched this guy to a different level. Trying to come through yet again. A 2 2 pitch, and Garcia takes ball three to run the count four. That's a great approach so far. The first two at bats, he has not been anxious, he has not been jumping at the pitch. We saw a lot of that in the previous series. Of course, he was pretty amped up. And that's a pitch a lot of people swing and miss at on Zach Gallon. Garcia was six out of his last seven on his payoff pitch. Oh. Watch his ball four to load the bases. Three straight two out base runners after Gallon struck out the first two of this inning. And here comes Mitch Garver. Now here's the interesting scenario here for Mitch Garver. Normally he's patient, especially early. We've seen him a couple times get aggressive on the first pitch. This would be the time if you see it in the middle of the zone, middle to end. But bases loaded now, two outs, a relatively easy inning going. Struck out the first two guys, and now the bases are loaded. And now, a quick word from Capital One. We need a clutch hit. Derek Jeter. Hang in there, rookie. I mentioned it when he's up there the first time. Didn't play against Tampa Bay in the wild card round. Bruce Bochy puts him into the lineup for game two of the division series and a grand slam to crack that series open. And the only guy that has knocked in more runs this postseason for Texas is Garcia. Mitch Garver quietly doing his thing. Bases loaded third inning. Goes after uh, the first pitch and fouls it back. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that was just a little bit lower and that would have been maybe the second one. Zach Gallon threw it right at the top of the zone. Seesaw battle early in game one. Here's the 0 1. Ball one strike. I've always said, you know, people ask, well, what's the postseason like? How much different is it really than the regular season? I said, can you imagine? It's like trying to pitch every inning in Colorado. 
Coors Field. It's hard to get three outs clean in Colorado. And the same can be said for the postseason. You've literally got to take every at bat like a ninth inning approach because you never know. Two outs, nobody on. You never know when an inning can get away from you because the crowd and the intensity and the adrenaline all are unmatched this time of the year. Yeah, this is nothing. Now it is a whole lot of something for Garver and the Rangers. Bases loaded, two out, and a 2 1 pitch. Garver takes ball three with nowhere to put him. And the other thing you can't do at this time, Joe, is you can't say, what if? What if I do this? What if? You cannot have any what ifs. This 3 1 pitch. Even though it's three to two, you cannot let the game get away. If you walk them, it's tied. If you lay one in the middle, you could be trailing. Three and two. That's a really good pitch. I didn't. I'm sure Garver was thinking, okay, he's not going to throw a breaking ball here. Three two. He sure did. And this thing started inside, and then ended up at the top. He's thinking, okay, I got a fastball, and then I did. What's that tell you about where he's going here? Man. Gutsy pitch, secondary again. 3 2. Fastball and it's fouled straight back. Now, these are the kind of counts as a hitter. I don't think you can really be guessing. I think you just got to stay in a location. And if it's in that location that you like, let it go. But if you're if you're guessing, you could be caught looking if you get the wrong pitch. Critical spot in game one. 3 2 to Garver. It is fouled again. Rangers got two runs in the first inning against Gallon. Diamondbacks responded, taking the lead in the top of this inning with three. And that pitch count is already at 68 for Gallon. Wow. And those last, those last 15 were after he struck out, you know, the first two guys. Eight of them to Garver. Tries again. And walks him to tie the game. Struck out the first two and then four consecutive two out base runners. Three of them coming on walk. I tell you, he threw some great pitches in that at bat, and it's going to seem like a bummer to walk in the tying run. But I, it, given the circumstances in that at bat by Garver, this is a great time to go and settle your pitcher down and go, all right, no big deal. Tie game. You got a guy at the plate that you've owned. Make pitches. Let's get out of this inning tied and let our offense go to work again. The guy that he's owned is Jonah Heim, who grounded out softly his first time, is now 0 for 9, 6 Ks against Gallon. Damage done, though, and that the Rangers have rallied with two out to tie the game. Want to talk postseason ball with a friend? Just tell Siri. FaceTime Parker. Three three in the third. Jonah Hine. Strike one. The one thing that I was why, why I set that up like that because if you walk him you've got a free swinger coming up so you know the guys want to swing so you have more room for error with bases loaded than a guy who is super disciplined as we saw in Garver and patient. Bullpen getting going Joe man apply warming Rangers are hoping it's too late. Fly to center field but no big deal for Corbin Carroll it's a two out rally for the Rangers. To tie this game at three, Gallon limits the damage to one. The Arizona Diamondbacks and their different style offensively, they have not been a great home run hitting team, but what they've done is run the bases really aggressively. Second in the majors in stolen bases, second in the majors at taking extra bases. We said they lead the majors in sack punts. The home runs have showed up to supplement all that during the postseason. And they've become the first team ever with a triple stolen base and a sacrifice bunt in one inning in a World Series game. And that third, doing it their own way. Tommy Pham leads off a tie game in the fourth and takes a ball from Nathan Evaldi. Well, you know what's amazing, and we talk about how they've single-handedly taken one of the rule changes and become the best at it. 
And what I mean by that is stolen bases on the bases when they're on. Oh, here's a shot to left field by Pham. It's way back there. And Tommy Pham puts the D-backs in front. Speaking of the supplementing with the long ball, it's a leadoff shot here in the fourth for Pham, and it's 4-3 Arizona. It has not been a great overall postseason for Pham, but he's had a couple big home runs, and this one puts him in front in game one of the World Series. Bounce back. Everybody on these teams can bounce back, meaning they have the ability to climb back in the game and just answer what the team before them did. You're seeing that big swing and big smile. And I'll strike on Guriel. But what I was going to say yeah. is defensively, they defend the stolen base. Offensively, they use it. And they use it in times and places that get them obviously back into games and win baseball games. And I asked, I said, you know, was it more of a combination of your roster was ready? And he said, yes, our roster was athletic and all ready. Last year, they stole bases before the rule changes. This year, they've really taken advantage of it. Only Cincinnati had more stolen bases than the Diamondbacks. Tor Lavelle says it's all about pressure. How do we put pressure on the other team? <laughs> the Al chops on the short for Corey Seager. And the first out of the fourth. One way to do it is to hit the ball out of the park. Tommy Pham does. Yeah, he saw that right middle in and knew it right away. Required just minutes before the deadline. Tommy Pham from the New York Mets. Seven team he's been with in his 10 years. Playing in his first World Series game. And he's got a homer. One away in the fourth. Alec Thomas. About five. Takes a ball and we check in with Tom Verducci. Thanks, Joe. Tommy, we saw a small ball last inning. That was decidedly not small ball. One no count. Tell me about the approach. That's our game, though. Small ball. You know, moving guys over and getting them in. Um, I tried to do it against the Dodgers. It didn't work. So I'm, I'm going to stick to the long ball approach. What's the approach against Evaldi and then at bat? Don't strike out. <laughs> you know, I mean, Evaldi's my guy, man. We played together last year. He's a great guy, um, warrior. He's the kind of guy that you want to play, play with. And um, he just left me a good pitch to hit. Thanks so much, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. All right, Tom and Tom. Two on to Thomas. Jeez, Tom's all over the place. Two and two. And Tommy Pham, a guy that you know, they've inserted right into the middle of that lineup, this youthful exuberance of a lineup, and then you've got the intensity and the edge of Pham that they've brought over. And the hair Guriel, he walks right into the shower talking about being serious. Thomas stays alive at two and two. He was there was a stretch down where he was carrying this offense when he first came over then went into a lull in September he got benched in the championship series came back the next game and gave him the lead with a solo shot early on and a career full of responding and doing things they say he can't that's bounce pass Evaldi Thomas already has one infield hit nearly got a second but a nifty play there by Lowe. Well, the D-backs have drafted and developed and traded for their roster to be where it's at right now. And the development took a little while, and they knew, okay, it's a matter of time. And in that period where it didn't go well, it showed their age. But they made it through it. And in the last, I don't know, I think when it turned, when they, they swept the, the Cubs in, in Chicago, flipped the script on the playoff standings, and they've been taken off ever since. There's a strike on Longoria who had a base hit on the first pitch that he saw his first time. How about Evan Longoria 15 years after he played in the World Series as a rookie at 38 years old. He's back in the fall classic. This is a guy who's done so many good things in his career. But he's back trying to do the one thing he's never done. That is win it all. Put a stamp on this great career. The 0 2. 
Look out by Woo. the hands. Well, you think about it. They went 5 and 0 oh when they went to go play the Phillies and got punched hard the first two games and everybody around baseball were like man this is a mismatch won two epic games at home lost the third game and then everybody in the world thought that the Philadelphia Phillies were going to move on and this team used that kind of chip on their shoulder and that underdog approach and went in and and silenced one of the most loud crowds in all of baseball in Philadelphia. Here's a 2 2. And there it is. Strike three on a generous outside corner from DJ Rayburn. Tommy Pham's home run has Arizona back in front in game one. Just down the street here, but these Rangers have been on their own roller coaster ride this season. They were in first place for most of the year until they lost 16 of 20 during the final month, only to recover and win six straight, get back into first, but then they lose on the last day of the season to lose the division that they had led all year. They got to fly across the country to play in Tampa Bay in the wild card round. They win there. They go up and beat the one seed Orioles and then rally from down 3 2 to beat the Astros in this improbable run. Has continued to their first World Series trip in 12 years. The steadying hand of that guy there, Bruce Bochy, after three years away from the game, back in his first season as the manager of the Rangers, looking for his fourth ring. Nathaniel Lowe leads off this inning and fouls off Zach Gallen's first pitch. Well, I'm pretty sure Bruce Bochy, he may have one time long ago rode a roller coaster, but he doesn't ride one as a manager. And that's what the players talked about. They said when we stunk he was the same when we were great he was the same. Pop fly shallow left field on comes Gurriel he's got it. For the first out of the fourth. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by. Capital One. What's in your wallet. And by T-Mobile America's largest and fastest 5G network. Bochi is managing his 90th postseason game tonight. He's won 14 of the last 15 series that he's managed in. On the way for Josh Young, there is ball one. And the other dugout, it's Tori Lavello, and Tom Verducci in a minute is going to have him. Scallon brings the 1 0 to Young. <laughs> Call in the outside corner. Seen Young, and he has the ability to stay on the ball and go center to right center. We saw him hit two home runs here. Very impressive, but when he gets into pull mode, he expands the zone, that front shoulder leaves, and he swings and misses a lot. A lot of power, but a lot of swing and miss. Two and one. Zach Gallon's been on a little bit of a roller coaster ride of his own in this game. His 2 1 pitch is to the right field. Base hit Young. And as promised, here's Tom Verducci. Oh, thanks. Tori, you gave our viewers kind of the Cliff Notes version of Arizona's offense with a triple, a stolen base, and a sack bunt. First World Series team to do that. What adjustment did you make against Evaldi in that inning? Uh, you know, I just feel like we had a good plan. Um, some guys were using the whole field. The all field approach always works. And, um, you know, we got some runners out there and, and put things in motion. And, and then Corbin had the big base hit. And Zach Gallon, you had the bullpen up last inning. What do you see right now? Um, you know, I, I thought it was a long inning. I just want to make sure that I protected him a little bit. I wanted to throw 40 pitches in an inning, but he, he did enough to get through the inning, give up only one run. I thought a key moment for us was coming back and putting up that big point on Fam's home run. Thanks, Tori. Thanks. One ball, no strikes on the nine hitter, Leody Tavares. Tore the bell, the longest tenured manager in Diamondbacks history in his seventh year. And credit to Mike Hazen and the other leadership of the Diamondbacks for sticking with him because there were some low times in between the postseason trips he took him on early on in his managerial tenure. And getting back there this year, 110 losses just two years ago. And he said he'd be sitting there just about every night saying, what do I do? I mean, everything that I do fails. Everything that I thought I believed in and that I thought worked isn't working. His mentors include Joe Torrey, Tony LaRussa, 
This guy's told him, stick with it. Stand on your foundation. It's going to turn. They weren't a whole lot better last year. And still finished way out of first place. Lost 88 games. But they have turned it around stunningly here this season. And in the World Series for the first time in more than two decades. The one two got him to chase two out. Yeah, not a good matchup for Tavares. He has not liked seeing these kind of pitches in the bottom of the zone, swing and miss. See the breaking ball, just tremendous depth. Runner at first, two out, back to the top of the order, Marcus Simeon. Nasty pitch, strike one. Well, both pitchers have had to work really hard. 82 pitches already, and it's only the fourth inning. That's a credit to both of these offenses creating that tension for both pitchers, taking advantage of the moments they needed to to score. Ball. And I said after that big inning of pitches that if he could go four or five innings that would be a win for the Diamondbacks. If they, I mean literally would would help that bullpen and not really stress from the first game on the bullpen that's going to have to be used every single game obviously. Young at first with two away gallon home with the two one Simeon grounds it foul. And that bullpen has been excellent really the last two months, but at this point it's kind of the big three yeah. and everybody else. Part of the equation has been getting it to those guys, Thompson, Ginkle, and Seawald. This pitch count already at 85 for Gallon here in the fourth. A little bit longer bridge tonight. His 2 2. And his rifle to left center field. Guriel's on the move. He will get there. Covers a lot of ground to take it away and finish off this inning. Corbin Carroll's going to bat second for the Diamondbacks. After a word from your local Fox station. 23 World Series on Fox is presented by Capital One as we welcome you back here to Arlington, Texas. Game one has been back and forth, and it's 4-2 to two Diamondbacks. On to the fifth, Nathan Avaldi to the nine-hitter. Geraldo Perdomo with a strike. In the 118 years of the World Series prior to this one, only four teams had made it two years removed from losing 100 games. And then this year, both these teams can say they did that. Arizona was 110 two years ago. Texas, 102. And then both were way out of first place last year, even. They've defied the odds all season, especially during this postseason run. Line drive, base hit, center field. Perdomo out of that nine spot keeps doing his thing. So leadoff man on Carroll coming up, and we go down to Kim Rosenthal. General Corbin Carroll woke up the morning of the 2019 draft thinking the Rangers were the best bet to take him. He knew some people in the organization. The Rangers had narrowed their choices at number nine overall to three players. Carroll, Josh Young, and Alec Manoa. He took Young. Manoa went to the Blue Jays at number 11. Carroll to the Diamondbacks at 16. That was in 2019, and then he played in less than a full season of minor league games before he got to the big leagues. Didn't play in 2020 with no minor league season. In the seventh game of 2021, he blew out his shoulder on a home run swing. And so Carroll didn't even play a full pro season until last year when he started in double A, finished it in the big leagues. And it was really his arrival that jolted these Diamondbacks back into contention. First one from Evaldi is a pitch out. Go down the first. That is very, very rare these days. I've seen two things that are rare a bump and a pitch out, and that's what the Diamondbacks do to you. They force you to think ahead and think about what you're possibly doing. 
and the Rangers are trying to steal a pitch away that's called a pitch out to throw him out at second if they thought he was stealing. I mean, just the threat of speed can bother you. Yeah, absolutely, and and you're going to see that throughout this series. It won't happen every game. It's not like every player that gets on base is going to steal, but the thought of it is in the mind of Vivaldi, and now the hitter just becomes better, and he's already a great hitter having a player standing at first base. And now 3 0 on Carroll. Unbeaten when they score first. So that is the Rangers that got on the board first. They're unbeaten when they steal a base, and they've got one of them. You tell Marte earlier. More than likely, right here, the runner will be going because they know the guy at the plate has good barrel to ball skills of the ball in the zone and won't expand it too much. And of course, they've got speed at first. It's the ultimate situation for the D backs. Here goes for Domo. 3 1. Swung on the miss. Still down. Not in time. And they're two for two tonight. And that actually worked out better than he swung and missed because he got a huge jump. Now Carroll with two strikes. We already saw what he did on a splitter. Got a triple. The, the running jump. No chance to get him. The swing and a miss kept the catcher back. And an easy stolen base. And now we'll see if Carroll can continue his magic with two strikes and at least get him over to third base. Arizona now 10 of its last 10 stolen bases the last three games. The one thing that Carroll does so well talking to Brian McCann his front elbow gets set and it's set early and it it's the mechanism that allows that barrel to get to the bat through the zone as quick as it does. He sets that elbow and he lets it fly. See if he gets one to let it fly out on 3 2. Fouls it into the glove for strike three. Eighth K for Avaldi. One gone in the fifth. Well, right here, Avaldi comes back 3 0 and does the rare thing against Corbin Carroll. Not only gets back in the count, but is able to strike him out and see how that front elbow goes and leads, and he just misses the ball in this at bat. But in most of the at bats, he doesn't. Runner at second one away the hitters Marte who takes a ball. Well, this summer Marte was bumming that he didn't make the all star game and that's when he ran into Luis Gonzalez who's still working with the team and Gonzalez encouraged him he said I know you're disappointed but turn that disappointment into motivation for making the playoffs and make that your time to shine. Got it in the playoffs of course and uh, he has shined in a big way and the brightest moment was. The first Arizona walk off in the playoffs since Gonzo's game winner. Game seven against Rivera. Perdomo at second as the one who comes home and a chopper foul. Our player resume is sponsored by Indeed. And Marte. 26 hits over his first 16 postseason games right in the heels of home run Baker. The great Thurman Munson at the top of that list. It's in a few games in 2017 when the D backs last went. Hits in all 12 games this year. Yeah. And you might say, wow, where did this come from? But Diamondbacks fans know this guy's been a good player for a long time. In fact, he had the number one average in the league for a three year span prior to struggling last year. On this 2 1 from Avaldi. Golf's one into right center field. Tavares on the move. It's over his head and off the wall. Marte's hitting streak extended. Lead extended. It's 5 to 3. I know there's so much talk about lineup construction, but I really believe he's the perfect number two hitter. A switch hitter that can do everything and do it well. And of course, from the left side, he just picks on a breaking ball that just hangs in the middle of the plate and explodes on it for an easy double. And if any more bobble would have happened right here, it would have been a triple. And he's tied the all time postseason record with a 17 game hitting streak to open his time. 
Hands it off to Gabriel Marino. Takes the ball from Avaldi. Nathan Avaldi had given up seven runs over his first four starts this postseason. But against this unique Diamondbacks lineup, he's given up five. And there is the list that Marte joins. Stop. 2 0. What have the Diamondbacks been able to do that nobody else has against you? They, they've grinded and grinded out early on. It was 0 2, 0 2, 0 2, and they took their medicine, and certainly they weren't touching him. But when he's made mistakes and they've gotten runners on, they turn into a different team. And I, I, I think the whole game, if this goes Arizona's way, is going to be turned on a dime on that 0 2 split that Corbin Carroll hit to open up that three run. Remember, it's second and third with one out. So in most cases, we've seen Avaldi get out of bases loaded. Crack that roller to Seeger in short. At the third goes Marte, but the first goes Seeger. And so when you hear the term, it just they're gritty, they grind out of bats, they do all the little things. That is not an overstatement of a team that has to play this way, right? And I don't think there's there's particular games they can slug with you. But for the most part, this is what they want to do. They want to get two out hits, they want to put pressure on the defense, runner on third, ball in the dirt, they got the capacity to score. So they put pressure in every aspect of the game. That is ball one on Walker. Marte in third. The irony in this game, though, they do have a lot of strikeouts. So it's a combination of making the most of the pitches they've been able to make contact on. We spent some hard contact. We saw fans home run. You mentioned Carroll's triple against a guy who nobody's been able to solve. The only time that Nathan Avaldi has been beaten in a postseason start, it's because his team didn't score. His team nine and one in his ten postseason starts lifetime. Now this could end up being his last batter here. He's obviously made different pitches and gotten behind in the count in this particular inning. Green light foul back. Trying to get Walker on lock there with a free swing. And Dunning ready to go down in that bullpen for Bruce Bochy. Runner at third, two out, and a three one. Walker ball takes ball down. four. First walk issued by Ivaldi, and that's going to be the last batter that he faces. And the sure thing for these Rangers in this postseason is the offense has been good, but kind of hit or miss, has been the top two in the rotation in Ivaldi and Montgomery. Not tonight, though. Arizona gets to Ivaldi. They've already scored five. They've got him at first and third, with two gone as he leaves the game in the fifth. Places of Audi here in the fifth. Well, Dunning did a great job for this team, relatively beat up in the starting rotation. He served well out of the pen and starting. Runner goes from first, throw from high, and won't happen. And the second goes Walker. Third stolen base of this game already for the Diamondbacks. And a couple runners in scoring position for fans. Fam gave Arizona the lead with a leadoff home run last inning. It's a big bouncer right side. This won't be an easy play. Runner covering Dunning and just in time. Race to the bag and Dunning and Lowe make it happen to finish off the Diamondbacks in the fifth, but they add a run. Three consecutive innings with a run for Arizona to chase Avaldi before this.
Game Team. Watch daily recaps, get personalized stats, highlights, and news every day all on the MLB app. Download it today. Two, three, and four coming up for the Texas Rangers. Down two runs in game one. Yeah, this is the part of the order that Zach Allen's not been able to solve. Seeger, Carter, Garcia. He's not gotten those guys out, facing them six times. Well, what the Diamondbacks have proven over the last week or two is they can play a seven inning game. Yeah. Meaning. They are fine turning it over to their last three guys sometimes in a six inning game so getting this extra inning out of a pitcher who hasn't been exactly great is huge for that's a bullet foul for the Rangers for the Rangers to get back and, and not fall into a they're going to have a tough time if they if it's late and they're trailing based on the way the Diamondbacks bullpen's been. Arizona has led nine games in this postseason. They've won all nine of those. Corey Seager leads off the fifth. Oh! And grabs this one off of the first, and an easy one for Christian Walker. So Zach Gallen, who, after giving up those five runs in game six of the championship series, immediately went into Tori Lovello's office and said, I want to pitch tomorrow in game seven. And Tori Lovello looked at him. He said, look, Skip, I got to contribute. I haven't done anything to help this team. If there's any way to get me in tomorrow, please do. And Tori said, had that game gone into extras, he was going to give Gallon a chance. Well, this game, if he gets through five innings, will be one of those look back moments because you give up two in the first. He really limited the damage in the third, even though it was two outs, nobody on. And he's kept his team right in the position you hope to when you're not at your best. Gets ahead of Carter 0 2. It's like so many that you, you know, hear the stories about fueled by a lifetime of being told that he couldn't, that he wasn't big enough, or that he didn't throw hard enough. And he said that's always fueled him. Anytime somebody said you can or so and so is better. All right, let's go play. Let's see. Twenty eight year old from New Jersey home of the no two and it's raked foul. Two three and four in this order retired just one time with Seager grounding out Carter's double both time scored a run knocked in a run. And Garcia has continued his tear with a base hit and a walk. Well the two strike battle meaning getting two strikes on the hitter tonight. They're one for eleven against Gallon with two walks including 0 for their last nine so he's made that necessary adjustment. Up down. Has been one of the best two strike pitchers in baseball the last couple of years part of why you see guys so aggressive against him they don't want to get to that right. two strike count where he's going to use any of his pitches you just don't know. Carter's worked it to 2 2 and now swings and fouls it into the glove for strike three finished him off with a curve. If he's able to get Garcia that dugout is going to give him a big congratulations as if he just pitched a nine inning shutout I promise you. And the pitching coach Brent Strom. First one to Garcia is swung on and missed that fastball rides past the swing. Four straight base runners in the first inning. It was two to nothing, just like that. One run in the four innings since. I mean, think about it. this crowd's been great, right? They've been waiting for this moment for a long time. But think about this postseason for the Rangers. This crowd's seen them win one game at home. <laughs> it's amazing. And that one game, of course, was the closeout against Baltimore. So they're 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 wanting to see their team respond here at home because now they have home field advantage. Hot shot to short for Domo's there. How about Zach Gallen finding it tonight? Going one, two, three here in the fifth. Back here in Arlington on our drone cam presented by T Mobile inside this massive ballpark. 
it up for the postseason as Guriel shoots the first one from Dane Dunning foul. This Texas bullpen has been an issue throughout the year that in this postseason has been kept pretty much under the surface. Those problems have. And the offense has scored a bunch. Starters have gone deep. They're going to have to get a lot of work in tonight. Seat is there. Guriel is out. Well, the Rangers struck first in this game. Corey Seager got it started with a walk, came in to score on a double from Evan Carter as they got two runs in the first inning. This place was rocking, but Arizona replied quickly in the third. Some bunts, some singles, a triple, and a three-run inning to take the lead. They tacked down with a solo shot from Tommy Pham in the fourth. And one more in the fifth inning on a Marte double. And so 5-3 here in game one. Alec Thomas takes the ball. Yeah, if there's ever been a, uh, if you could put a, a gauge, a monitor on the confidence growing <laughs> in a team, this team would be number yeah. one. I mean, again, they didn't play, they had to play the Astros the last weekend of the series, got swept. But it really set them up for a better path. They ended up going to Milwaukee winning those two games and then the surprise of all surprises was the Dodgers. I think that is the single moment that injected the confidence they needed to go all the way. I don't think once they beat the Dodgers they felt like they could lose to anybody. Change up the up the middle. Back in Simeon springs to his feet and throws late with Thomas's speed. He has his second infield hit. And this is what they do. We talked about putting it in play, putting pressure on the defense. Using their speed. And to your point, John, Tori DeVello was saying there was a time when this team thought they were good, but they hoped that they would win the big games against the good teams. Cool. It's no longer hoping. They now believe. And why wouldn't you? And he said he had to take a more active role as a, as a manager in, in communicating and talking to his players because no yeah. Goldschmidt, you know, none of the players that he had before, and 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 it it worked for him. And speaking into the team and getting them back locked in and not feeling sorry for themselves when they were going bad. Two strikes on Longoria. This team was in first place midseason. Early July, they were in first place, but then they had a 7 and 27 stretch through July and August, where it was easy to look and say, well, this is just the same old Diamondbacks, and they're going to flash and then fade. But they kept on coming. And here they are in their first World Series in 22 years. So they won in 2001. And probably then, in just their fourth season. Eighty-four and seventy-eight. Last team in. All you got to do these days, though, is get in. And baseball's crazy. Thomas, at first one away, and Dunning will check out. Here's the 2 2. It's lifted to shallow right field. On comes Garcia. Two gone in the six. And if tonight's game ends in a walk off, Capital One will donate $1,000 to the Jackie Robinson Foundation as part of the Capital One walk off program. Today, Capital One has donated over $750,000 to the foundation as part of this initiative. Here comes Bochi. One of the reasons this bullpen has been able to pitch above its heads in this postseason. The ever perfect touch of that guy brings on his rookie, Cody Bradford.
World Series tomorrow night. Diamondbacks and Rangers coverage starts at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox. Jordan Montgomery for the Rangers, Merrill Kelly for the Diamondbacks. Bradford's on for Geraldo Perdomo. Switch hitter over to his weaker side and pops it back out of play. Arizona with a 5-3 lead here in game one. Zana face off with the rookie Bradford who has been really impressive in this postseason for Bruce Bochy. Yeah he likes him a lot. He likes his inner motor and his ability to get in on right handers. And thinks he's going to be a really really good pitcher for him obviously in the future. Thomas at first two out. He got really one of the last spots on the roster going into the division series and then was huge in one of the games in Baltimore going three plus scoreless innings. After a season where he was back and forth between the big leagues and triple A. First time he's worked out of the bullpen since he was a freshman in Baylor. Falling a strike on Perdomo. Starters had to work awfully hard, had some time off after their teams won in seven games, and now you're going to see the Diamondbacks bullpen with different release points coming out and creating different problems for the hitters based on where they release the baseball. There goes Thomas from first, throw from high, not in time, and it ricochets into short left field. Thomas thought about it and then thought better of it. Fourth stolen base of game one. They picked their spots and they're super successful and that's been the key to their year. They wanted the stolen base to be about an 87 percent 85 or percent higher of success and they've been able to do that in these last three games they've been 100 <laughs> percent. Now 12 of the last 12 is yep, for yep. It takes <laughs> better go get that back straight to. Oops. Might have to use his timeout. <laughs> and then hurry. It's a pretty good pitch. Yep, yep. <laughs> Gets this crowd revved up a little bit. Perdomo is looking for a fourth consecutive multi hit game. The rise continuing in this postseason. On a 3 2. He pokes one to second, and Simeon's gone. To the bottom of the six we go. 5 3. Diamondbacks in front. Performance sponsored by Capital One. This bullpen for the Diamondbacks and winning games six and seven in Philadelphia. Nine scoreless innings. That was huge. And the different release point starts right here with Thompson. You're going to see side winding, slinging, and different action and different release point than you would from Gallon, who was straight over the top. Looks like they got a little problem with pitch calm. You had already pitched in the World Series and your earpiece doesn't work. Yeah, he was a huge part of that game seven. Johnny faced four hitters. He retired all seven of them. And what a pickup he's been. Minor league contract in late August. He had a six ERA with the Tampa Bay Rays. He had fallen out of favor there, was in the minors on the injured list. He asked for his release. The Rays granted it. And apparently, Arizona guys in the front office had liked him for years, and they said, if he ever comes available, we got to pounce. And they did. And They've kind of given the Rays some of their own medicine, taking a guy, unlocking something, and he's been huge. Yeah, he has been huge. And look, they're, they're, the trades they made were not insignificant. They were major, and it's all come together at the timing they needed it most. Their bullpen was not great during the regular season at large stretches, but it's been great lately. Mitch Garber leads off, and there is that <laughs> wacky angle just flinging the thing in there for a strike. You've got to think it's so hard to pick up on a hitter. Ball one strike. 
This is a bullpen that for years has been the biggest issue for the Diamondbacks. In fact, the previous two years, they blew more than 80 saves. It was more than any pen had ever blown in a two year span. Bouncing ball to Perdomo. One gone in the six. And it was bad for a lot of this year. This bullpen at this point, completely unrecognizable from the beginning of the season. You know, these big three we're talking about. And then you throw in the rookie and South Rank. None of these guys have been here all year. We told you Thompson's story. Ginkle spent some time in AAA this year. Seawald, they got in the trade at the deadline. Shape shifting on the fly and would not be here without it. Here's Heim, who's as happy as anybody to have Gallon out of the game. Now 0 for 10 against him. Nothing. Yeah, had 1 and 0. Well, it's a simple game plan, but they sure are executing it. The D backs get on, get them over, get them in, and timely pitching. And that recipe has served them well. We talk about how improbable the run is big picture. But how about when you consider what hasn't gone right for them that they've been able to overcome. I mean Carroll didn't do anything until game seven of the championship series. Walker didn't do anything at all. Oh, That's a walk for Hine. They've lost three of the four games that Gallon and Kelly have started in the championship series. They're down three to two. But just enough offense. Airtight defense is locked down bullpen. I don't know how many times I've heard you say it though. Walk in this situation in the regular season is whatever. Here it's like, oh boy. Yeah, it's a rally. Well, they almost act like when you corner an animal and then that animal starts showing its fur and starts getting like they they have that same approach, you know, when they get their backs up, they actually get a little more aggressive and a little more chaotic for the other team to not to it's hard to win the fourth game in a best of seven. Every year it is. They made it really hard for Philadelphia the way they played those last two games. With the walk, Rangers have the tying run at the plate in the form of a guy who has homered twice in his last three games. Nathaniel Lowe. It's a high drive to deep right field. Carroll's going back on the track. He's got room. He just missed it. Boy, he did just miss that. That was a towering fly ball. And that's the side, believe it or not, even though this is a dome, I mean, that's the side of the field where the ball will carry a little bit more. And everybody talks about it, and he just gets underneath it. Wow. And so two gone in the sixth inning and up comes Josh Young. Oh boy. Frustration of being that close for low. Here's a guy who has power. He's hit some big home runs in this postseason. 25 year old rookie Young hits it hard and through. It's a two out base hit for Young. Tying on a board in the six. Well, another guy that's glad that Gallon is out. This is a better matchup for Tavares. And once again, the Rangers are uh, they're, they're, they're getting really pesky with two outs. They're creating some stress with two outs. And they're looking for one more hit to get closer in this game. That's how they did it in the third inning. Four consecutive two out base runners to get their third run. First traffic they've had since then. First and second, two gone. And Tavares, a visit coming here from Strong. And now a quick word from Evan Williams Bourbon. Reach for a fan favorite, Evan Williams 1783 Small Batch. When bourbon's done right, people notice. It's a guy in Tavares here who Bruce Bochy has said, look, I, you know, I studied the team after I took the job, watched a bunch of last year's games. I saw that he had some tools, but I didn't realize he was this good. And he's grown a ton this year. 
25 years old. It's so easy. You know, you get this full life story of a guy when he gets to the big leagues as early as Tavares did a few years ago. But man, he's still just 25. This is a good player with a great future still. Now he will be aggressive on first pitch fastballs middle to middle away. Normally if it's spinning or off speed he'll take first pitch but we've seen where the hole is. It's anything off speed changing change up going the opposite way of his barrel. Go ahead run at the plate in the sixth inning. That is one disengagement there. Thompson stepped off. Sweeps it inside for ball one. Time at second. Young at first. Tavares tops it foul. It's one and one. So many times this season where the Rangers have looked finished, whether that was within games or you know, on the standings down the stretch, blowing the division at the end. Down 3 2 in the championship series, and every time they've come back and kept going. Every time they've defied logic. They'll have to come back for a game one win. That's it. Frisbee in for strike two. Oh, that was a great pitch. That that pitch to the hitter never looked like it was going to be a strike and the last bit of that movement watch how this is released ball 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 and then last minute catches the bottom of the strike zone. Here's the one two pitch. Turned it up with a fastball huge separation and speeds there. Got to be careful against Tavares on the middle part of the strike zone is where his power and where he wants the ball. The area to get him is when you get him out there, and that backdoor slider was able to start there, and he had to almost give up on it. Two on, two out, and a one-two from Thompson. Tavares pops it up, left side. Will it stay in play? Moreno's got it. And Thompson puts up a zero in the six. Diamondbacks with the lead in game one. And we're back after word from your local Fox station. Wear what the players are wearing on field during the postseason. Check out the largest collection of jerseys, caps, t-shirts, and more. LBShop.com. Top of the order for the Diamondbacks here. Leading game one, 5-3. Top of the seventh inning. Carol Marte and Moreno. And Carol, as he did in game seven of the championship series, has shined here in game one of the World Series with a two-run triple. Showing ball. Ball's out. One ball, one strike. He was right in the middle of that third inning and what an incredible at bat. 0 2 and then that huge triple. Sticking with the bunt, lays it down. Bradford hustles and just barely gets him. I tell you what, this ball checks up and comes back to Bradford, and he makes a nice bare hand play. The only way he's going to make him a little bit of a loop of the throw, but the taller low is able to avoid the runner and get the ball just in the nick of time. So they keep Carroll off of the bases. One gone in the seventh, and it brings up Marte. Switch hitter over to his natural side. Extra aggressive over here usually. This time though, take strike one. Yeah. Marte has extended his hitting streak to 17 games to open his postseason career. 
Here's a spinner off the end of the bat. Simeon ranging into center left field. What a play! Marcus Simeon for the second out of the seven. Wow, what a play right here. A speedy runner. Ball's got kind of a cue ball. This is outstanding on both ends. Just beating him again. And so Bradford does his job coming out of the Rangers bullpen. With Gabriel Moreno coming up. New pitcher coming in. Tight one in game one of the World Series. Welcome back. I'm with Zach Gallon. You grinded through five innings and 99 pitches. Ever started with 25 pitches and two runs in the first inning. How did you settle this game down? Yeah, uh, you know, ideally you throw up a zero in the first inning. Um, but I mean, these guys grind. Um, they've been grinding, so I was like, I got to grind. I got to get us through five innings um, and try and hand it over to the, you know, our sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth guys. So um, yeah, I just tried to settle in, make some pitches, um, you know, try and get rid of the traffic. Tori Lavello showed a lot of confidence in you. Third time around the lineup. And you worked through that. And he had a conversation with you after you came out. What did he tell you? Yeah, I, he was just saying, you know, those, those are big outs. Um, I think Tori knows that I would have been pissed if he would have not let me go out there for the three, third time. But I would have understood it at the same time. Um, but I knew, um, you know, it's my job to at least give us a chance to win through five. Um, our bullpen's been unbelievable. So just trying to hand to those guys with a, you know, clean lead. Thanks, Zach. Thanks. Gabriel Moreno flies out to right field and John Gray retires the batter that he comes on to get. He got the top of the Rangers order coming up down two. Diamondbacks trying to take game one on the road here leading 5 3 as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning back in Arlington. Yeah we got plenty of familiar faces in the park CC Sabathia taking in game one. Your old teammate Greg Maddox is here of course his brother Mike the pitching coach for the Rangers. Travis Kelsey taking some time from his prep for the Broncos does everywhere these days. And President Bush. And his wife Flora great first pitch that he threw he's thrown four World Series first pitches I think four for four on strikes and we welcome you back inside here these Rangers got off to a flying start in this game they had two runs in the first inning just one run since but they got the big hitters coming up here yeah they do I think this series has a chance to be within a three run window every game what I mean by that is we could see a lot of ninth inning game tying tying run at the plate yeah. I think it's going to be more tight than people think and everybody's getting to learn about the gritty Diamondbacks and the never give up Texas Rangers. Yeah, and this Arizona bullpen continues to churn. Thompson out, Joe Manaply on. Manaply got a couple big hitters out during game seven. This is a guy who was an all star last year, was so bad at times this year, he wondered if he was going to hang on. He was wondering if the Diamondbacks were going to cut him loose. But like so many of these guys, has found it at the perfect time. Tries to go back door and gets the call about six inches off of the plate there for a strike on Simeon. And again, you can see the release point being a little bit different. His 0 1. He's going to rely on a sinker and slider for the most part. And, and that's what he's going to throw to left handers, right handers. Might mix in a change up. Be a higher percentage from like right there, and I think the, the 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 interesting thing about what they've done in their bullpen is because they give you different looks, you know that's what makes it tough on the hitters. Biggest turnaround within this Arizona turnaround has been the pen. One two to Simeon Marcus yanks one left center field hangs up for Guria. One gone in the seventh inning and tonight's telecast is sponsored by Progressive providing cars to veterans through their keys to progress program.
The Simeon's postseason issues have continued. He's 0 for 4 tonight. And Seeger comes up with the bases empty. Two walks, two runs scored. He seems to do that a lot. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I tell you, he is. I mean, I know there may be other big shortstops, but he is a big, strong shortstop. It'd be interesting to see how long he gets to stay in that position as he signed a long contract with the Rangers. Well, that's something that people have been talking about since the Dodgers drafted him in the first round. How long can a guy of that size stay at that spot? He's always, it's always been part of his identity playing short. And so has been uber aggressive. And an 0-2 hole here. 6-4-2-15. Guy's always been obsessed with hitting. If you're trying to find Corey Seager, chances are you're going to find him in the cage. It's in the hours leading up to the game. That's a lot of times even after the game. Corey Seager will be in there grinding away, trying to make a fix for the next day. We saw in the championship series him go through a rough patch. Bruce Bochy say, just watch. He tends to find it and figure it out quickly. Let off the next game with a home run. On this one two from Manipur, oh. chops it foul. Well, it almost looks like he's squeezing the bat because he doesn't move much with his legs. He's just sitting there ready and you almost get this little grind of the hands and the bat. Just a little bit of an anxious moment. It looks like he's going to swing at every pitch and hit it through the moon. And he just uncoils, but down swinging here. And Manipur has retired the first two in the seventh. This sinker was fantastic. Two seam sinkers are making a comeback. Everybody's trying to throw or was trying to throw four seams top of the zone get tremendous backspin and give the illusion of the ball staying up. Carter with two out. But now you're seeing more pitchers pitch under the barrel of the swing and the hitters obviously are going to change over time because there's no shift and you always got to adapt in this game. Here's the 1 0. Carter oh. chops it foul. Now, how about Joe Mantiply riding that pitch, riding this mix to the last four hitters that he's faced? Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, Marcus Simeon, and Corey Seeger, all All Stars. He's gotten them all out. Critical in game seven. Same here in game one. A couple pitch con malfunctions today. Well, earlier today as part of the fall classic legacy initiative MLB and the Texas Rangers hosted a special event at Mission Arlington Mission Metroplex where funds will go towards expansion of the organization's medical clinic go to MLBtogether.com to learn more. Got the geek squad out there got it fixed. If you were uh, using pitchcom, you what are the chances you would have been calling the pitches yourself? 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. I know the game is controlled through a lot of information through the catcher. There would be no confusion if the pitchers call the right. pitch, because then that's the one that you know there would be no shakeoffs. <laughs> We've seen be. some guys do it. And apply trying to go through the top of the order in order his one two to Carter's taken low. And then I would work on a, a fail safe if I can't hear it you know, go to the signs. I know those are an ancient thing but <laughs> throwback. <laughs> signs. Buttons. Two two. Along first. And foul ball. This ball was fair for a while. And then it wasn't. Kevin Carter and the Rangers happy that it wasn't. And fresh life here. This offense has scored 20 runs over the last two games of the championship series. Just three tonight. 
They got two in the first. They got one in the third. Hardly a threat since. Josh Spores getting ready for the eighth. Another 2-2. Two -two. Carter pops it to short. Perdomo's there. And a 1-2-3-7 inning against the top of the order for Joe Manaply. This improbable World Series matchup. It's 5 3 in game one. Top of the eighth inning where Christian Walker will lead things off for the Diamondbacks. John Gray stays in. Now John Gray was a starting pitcher for the Rangers this year, but got injured his last time out at the end of the regular season. So it was a bit of a surprise that he was ready for the championship series. He made one relief appearance. Yeah, gave up a run in that one inning of work, but he's one of several length options Bruce Bochy has down in that bullpen that makes the whole thing kind of a wild card. Because the pen has struggled this year, but it's a whole lot different looking than it has been given all those starters they have down there. Yeah, and one can only think of the prospects of the Rangers in the future when they get all their guys healthy. Now, next year they won't have the Jacob DeGrom, but a healthier Max Scherzer. And the likes of John Gray and Evaldi and Montgomery. It is 0 2 to Walker. It is swung on and missed. And Walker struck out for the third time tonight. The pitching was supposed to be why the Rangers are ready to contend, right? Not the top offense in the AL. The starting rotation was supposed to be deadly. So the injuries they dealt with, it's a totally different looking group than they had planned on. Fortified it at the deadline, getting. Jordan Montgomery getting Max Scherzer. Well, they've sort of pieced it together in the postseason and rode that offense. Tommy Finham has got a home run in this game, takes a strike. Yeah, they're going to be good for a while, are the Rangers? And you already documented how, you know, they've struggled up to this point and they constructed a team to be good for more than just a couple years. Invested a lot of money and went and got Bruce Bochy said I know you're you're coaching your grandkids but can we just steal you for a few more years and that man Chris Young was able to lure him away Young who pitched for him in San Diego Gray's 1 1 fan takes in the dirt ball two. game one to this point though about these Arizona Diamondbacks these fearless Diamondbacks Trying to go to seven and two on the road in this postseason. And a team that early on it was like, okay, these guys are exciting. And then you get to midseason and they're still in first place. And it's like, okay, well, that's pretty good. But then they fade and it's easy to ignore them again. Even coming into the postseason, we showed the odds. Nobody was giving them a shot. As Tori Lavella said, a connected team is a dangerous team. He means that in the way they're together in the clubhouse. He means that through this lineup. And you've seen that here in game one. On a 2 2, fan pokes it foul. There's tomorrow's starter, Merrill Kelly. Another 2 2 from Gray. Got a chase from Fan. Two gone. And here's Guriel. As uh, Arizona Diamondbacks put this roster together, Guriel came over and it was a key trade in December. We've talked about them getting Moreno, the young catcher, but Guriel's the other guy that came over from Toronto. That was not an easy deal for Mike Hazen to make. Yes, they had a bunch of left handed hitting outfielders, but Dalton Varsho was outside of Corbin Carroll, probably their best young guy, and had already become a favorite in the clubhouse, was already kind of one of the young leaders. A lot of times the best moves are the tough ones, though. This is one that has really turned out for Arizona. Real high 24 home runs in his first season. 
All star for the first time. And now trying to add to the family's ring collection. Of course, his brother Yuli's got a couple in Houston. On this one, one from Gray. Gray takes strike two. And again, this game, a little uncharacteristic amount of strikeouts that they have offensively, but they've mounted five runs. So when they've swung and missed, it's been relatively without runners in scoring position a couple of times, but they have uh, made the most of it when they put it in play. Guriel does a great job of fastballs against right handers. He doesn't swing and miss many on fastballs. So he's locked in on fastballs. And then where they get him is on the outside part of the plate. Looks like they're coming inside here with a 2 2. Guriel muscles one over Seeger into center field, a base hit. I think they almost did him a favor there. Talking about fastballs, he didn't miss that one. Second Arizona base runner against the Texas bullpen. And it keeps this eighth inning going. Well, much like his brother, he's got a similar approach to hitting a baseball. You see that head down. He goes down and gets that fastball. He's at first. He can run a little bit too. Thomas at the plate. And he's used his running ability to get two infield singles in this game. Not surprising seeing this guy fly. This is a freak athlete that they say threw down an alley oop dunk when he was in seventh grade at five foot seven inches. He's once committed to play football at TCU. 23 year old in his second year in the big leagues. Fouls it off and it's one and one. Grew up around the game. His dad was a strength coach of the Chicago White Sox, and so he you know, calls guys like. Paul Canerco and Jim Tomey, Aguilar Ordonez, those those guys mentors. For the man at first and two out, here's a one-one pitch to him. Ball two on Thomas. Well, he's aggressive and takes an aggressive hack. I mean, he gets after it and he finds a way, at least this postseason, to come up with some of those big swings and that home run power has played out in the postseason for Thomas. Nine home runs in the regular season. Surprise slugger here in October with four and some massive ones. On this 2 1, Thomas leaves it upstairs. Ball three. Remember that a home run? What's that every, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks in the regular season? If that, one every eight at bats in his first postseason. There goes Goriel, 3-1, the Thomas lifts down the left field line. Long way to go for Carter and Young. Young won't get there, bounces on the top of the railing. And it's three and two. So Goriel is doing what these Diamondbacks have done here in game one, a continuation of what they did the last two. Three consecutive games with at least four stolen bases. 17 of their last 17. Marte got everybody a taco. He was the first one. Head start coming again here for Guriel. Two gone and a 3 2 count on Thomas. There he goes. Here it comes. Thomas down on strikes. Texas bullpen doing its job. Part of the order coming up. It's Billy Garcia to lead the things off for the Rangers. Down two. Big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. Face of this bullpen turnaround right here. Kevin Ginkle, who struggled for years, is absolutely filthy at this point. He spins the sign for a strike on Adolis Garcia, and he had the Phillies swinging out of their shoes and not even getting close. No, a tremendous break on that pitch. It disappears and it's tough to hit. You got to hit a fastball and get get lucky and he maybe he hangs one in the in this strike zone. But right now what I've seen out of him and the confidence 
that he has to go to that pitch at any time. Been impressive to watch. Going to ride that confidence against the heart of the Rangers lineup here. That is just inside, and it's ball two on Garcia. And you have the combination of power and fastball 96 and above, and then you can have the ball literally. When you hear fall off the table, that's what it looks like to a hitter when it comes up there. It absolutely drops down and disappears. That is something pitchers have been able to prey on with this guy. And Adolis Garcia. One for two here in game one. Outside. Good take right there. Garcia. Uh, I was going to say one of us has it wrong. It's Adolis. That's ball three. My bad, he says. The league is hitting 154 on that pitch. And he was glad to walk to first. <laughs> Only to come back. Trying to escape it. And then he takes a strike and the count is full. And this is where he has finished guys off as well as anybody in this postseason with that slider. Carver and Heim to follow in a two run game here in the eighth. Here's a 3 2. He goes to the slider. It's bounce foul. When you can know that it's coming and it looks like it's still impossible to lay off. It is a strike for so long until it's not. Rangers got two in the first and one in the third. Silent since. Another payoff pitch. Ooh, had one to hit there. Yeah, that was one to hit. Certainly, as this series progresses, the more looks they get at a particular rel reliever, and it's not guaranteed you're always going to see the same guy, but the more looks you get at the pitch like this, down the road, game six, game seven, if it goes that far, advantage hitter. Eighth pitch here, Garcia hits it up the middle, pass Perdomo in the center. Adolis Garcia on for the third time, and the Rangers get the time run to the plate in the eighth. He's become such a good breaking ball hitter in the zone. This one he went and got out of the zone. Fastballs up is what really gives him the most issues. And a big leadoff hit. Now you watch him when he goes to attack this pitch. See how he goes down to get it strong enough to get it past the infielder. Tying run at the plate. A very powerful guy. First one to Mitch Garver is inside. inside. And John, I know that Garcia is the exciting one. And you got the All Stars at the top. I've been so impressed with Mitch Garver, though. Yeah, stoic. I mean, that's kind of the whole Ranger team stoic and ready for the moment. And doesn't get too carried away. On this one, he takes a strike. It's one and one. Came up with the bases loaded tonight. Took a walk. Get his 12th run batted in in this postseason. Yeah, that was a great walk too. That was a great at bat. Only played in half the year. Still hit 19 home runs. Did Garver? Could tie it with one here. The one-one pitch couldn't lay off. One and two. A few guys in the game that when they see spin they don't they don't swing until they get two strikes that is so hard to determine as a hitter when you're when you're worried about 96 you you, you see the ball right there and you don't want to get beat and then it disappears. Pinkle shakes a couple times. Here comes his one two Garver swings and misses a fastball at 97 he shook to get to that and blew it by him. I mean that looks like 107 after you've seen slider slider. He runs that fastball up and in and it is by him. One on one out two run game in the eighth inning. Jonah Heim oh, up. upstairs for ball one. Heim has two home runs this postseason. One of game six in Houston. 
All-star catcher representing the tying run. Ginkle deals and Hine takes oh, ball two. Jonah Heim spent seven years in the minor leagues, wondering if he'd ever get a shot. And then he was traded and traded again and again three times before he established himself. In the World Series here. Hey, Ned! They went around. The ball gets away. Garcia is going to take second base. So into scoring position he goes. And the count two and one. One of the second time the Rangers have had a guy in scoring position since they last scored in the third inning. This is one of the best hitters in baseball in these situations this year. 2 1. Hine takes ball three. Well, he's a much better low ball hitter than high ball. That's why they're trying to go to the top of the zone with the fastball. And so, if this situation, you got to get your eyes looking to one area. And if he gets it down, that's his best chance for slug and his best chance to get a hit. 3 1. Hine shoots it foul, and it's 3 and 2. They stayed up. This is a tough call right here on a pitch selection. He got a 2 0 breaking ball that he swung and missed at. And he hasn't caught up to a fastball to this point. So when you're caught between two like that if you think the guy's aggressive you go with your aggressive pitch and that would be the slider down. The problem with the slider down is if you leave it in the zone that lefty lefty zone that you see their power stroke. That's what you're trying to stay away from. But if you think he's going to swing it's a swing and miss pitch for sure. Here's a three two Hine got a fastball and sent it foul. Best chance for Bochy's bunch in a while. Runner at second, one gone, eighth inning of game one. Another 3 2 pitch. It was the breaking ball that he's looking for the swing and miss. John Heim stayed alive. Yeah, did a nice job. That was a good pitch, too, and he, he fouled it off. So after slowing him down, maybe he speeds him up again with a fastball. The cat and mouse game. Who wins it? It's waged eight pitches. Mostly fastballs, those two sliders sprinkled in. 20th pitch of this inning for Kevin Ginkle, and he's gotten just the one out. The eighth to Hine is foul back. It's another fastball. They caught a Decent chunk of the plate there, but again late. Tom has gathered a lot of information on the ninth pitch. He takes ball four. Heck of a walk from Heim. Rangers have the time run aboard. If tonight's game ends in a walk off Capital One will donate a thousand dollars to the Jackie Robinson Foundation as part of the Capital One walk off program to date Capital One has donated over seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to the foundation as part of this initiative. Yeah, a visit out there for Strom Smith is going to pinch run representing the time run here. We saw Smith as a pinch runner in game five of the championship series and was kind of caught in between. He looked indecisive out there in a situation where he could have tagged and didn't. Out there meeting his wheels here as low comes to the plate. I think that meeting in the mound was to remind A, the scenario that he's facing low. And, and again, the Astros pitched low totally different than the Orioles. 
The Orioles pounded low with fastballs was not able to catch up. He ran into an opposite field home run and then he, of course he hit another one against the Astros. But in this case right here first and second I think the pitching coach went out to say use your fastball be on attack and beat him to the barrel of the bat. That's what the scouting report should have been or should be on low. Tying on a board. Go ahead, run at the plate. First pitch upstairs. He's hit two home runs in his last three games. He just missed hitting another his last time up. The closer, Seawall. One out, eighth inning. 1 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. I mean, his swing does look better, and he's starting to get closer to having that bat speed. But every fastball we saw there for a while, he was getting beat. He does have power to the opposite side of the field, but that fastball right down the middle by him. I saw that look on his face like, huh? Felt like it was on that one. Garcia's at second. Smith at first, the tying run. Kinkle's 1 1. Stuck with a fastball. One ball and two strikes. See, to me, that's got to be the rest of, of this at bat until he proves that he can hit that ball up and the, and the velocity is just beating him. He's swinging underneath it. Of course, that's what happens when you have good life on your fastball. Now the 1 2. It's another fastball on the hand. Shadow left field. Guriel is there. Nothing but hard stuff to get low. Two gone in the eighth. Now a different story with Young. I talked about in his first at bat, the second at bat, sorry, if he stayed to right field, right center, he got the line drive hit to right field, a base hit. And the one thing about Young is that he will swing at a lot of breaking balls. So this is the opposite. If your ginkle and the game plan you would want to attack more with your breaking balls than your fastball against young yeah, he has missed on more than half of his swings this postseason against breaking balls but is hitting 470 against fastballs tie and run aboard go ahead run at the plate two gone in the eighth inning the rookie young fights it off strike one Kevin Ginkle having to dig deep in this inning. 27 pitch coming here. Started with a single from Garcia. Heim walked. Smith pinch running form at first. Golden chance for the Rangers in the eighth. Ginkle's 0 1. Young leaves it up. Yes, have been the high price free agents the Rangers have signed this year the eighth overall pick of the draft made it to the majors last year Homer on his first swing what a player he's been just one year in on this one one pitch breaks his bat on a roller left side Perdomo's got it over the first the inning is over Kevin Ginkle gets out of the jam Arizona bullpen remains nails it's five three after eight. John Gray trying to cover the final few innings of this game. One and a third scoreless. He's got a new catcher as they pinch ran for Jonah High. Austin Hedges on for the first time in this postseason. That's a strike yeah. on Evan Longoria. And if you put Hedges right into Heim's spot in the order, which would be due up seventh in the bottom of the ninth. Well, at the very least, the Rangers have made sure that they're going to get their top of the order up again. Nine, one, and two coming up. Against Seawall. Yeah, they got to do something not a lot of people have been able to do. Seawall throws that fastball in a place where it just looks like you're going to get it as a hitter, and they can't see it and they don't hit it. He's been really, really good, and he's going to have to be really, really good to face the top of the lineup for the Rangers. Longoria's down on three pitches. John Gray, last four outs have all been strikeouts. Game two of this series is tomorrow. Same time, same place. It'll be Merrill Kelly who's got a 265 and Jordan Montgomery, a 216. He was the winning pitcher out of the bullpen in game seven. 
Bruce Bochy's coming out of his dugout here. One and two thirds he's gotten from Gray. Looks like that's all he'll ask for. Matthew Stafford and the Rams take on Dak and the Cowboys just across the street here. Browns down to the Seahawks of the regional action. Check for the game in your area, only on Fox. It's the left-hander Will Smith on to spin a breaking ball to Gerardo Perdomo with one away in the ninth inning. Will trying to do something that has never been done, try to win his third consecutive ring with his third different team, Atlanta, then Houston, and now Texas. So he's the guy every team's looking for That's for good it. luck. The magic one, Will Smith, who was their closer for a lot of this year, but struggled midseason. Yeah, demoted from that role. The clerk's that guy now. Coach is still using him, though. Home of the 0-2 pitch. And so for the Texas Rangers in the ninth inning, it's Tavares, Simeon, and Seeger. Seawald ready to go for the Diamondbacks. He's only trying to make this a familiar story in this postseason. That is, get a lead with team baseball offensively. A little bit of pop in there as well. And then have this newly amazing bullpen lock it all down. Yeah, their confidence has grown in winning a lot of close games. And the Rangers, on the other hand, haven't won that many close games because their offense has been that much better. Young. So during the regular season they just blowed teams out. I mean that was that was part of the reason why the bullpen didn't get exposed that much. But in one run games they were 14 and 22. Thankfully for them they didn't play that many one run games. And a tight one here in game one. So two gone in the night. Back to the top in Carroll. You thought Not his up. two run triple in the third inning was the biggest. Oh, swing. absolutely. Yeah, it's it's the reason if they win the game, it's that's the simplest reason why they will win. They're down two nothing, looking to get one run, and they ended up getting three runs out of it. Bucks this one on a line to right field. Garcia's back and leap and a catch. Rangers fans 12 years after game six are saying that looks a little more like it going back making the play passing those seatbelts to the bottom of the ninth nine one and two coming up two for the tie three for the win. Dylan Gabriel leading sixth ranked Oklahoma in a showdown on the road against the Jayhawks. All beginning with big noon kickoff from Lawrence at 10 a.m. and then Oklahoma, Kansas at noon Eastern on Fox. So here we go to the ninth inning of game seven after this great catch, or game one after this great catch from Adolis Garcia. If he didn't catch that, Corbin Carroll's going to be off and flying. Garcia makes the play, and here comes Paul Seawald, who they got at the deadline. Nearly perfect during the regular season. Six out of six in the postseason. Yeah, and talk about the way that he throws a baseball. It's got there's a term in baseball with pitchers that it's it's an invisible. And what does that mean? Well, the fastball looks like it's right there, and the hitters swing under it. They don't see it the way it comes out of his hand, and he has been able to live in the zone and live away from trouble so far in the postseason. 9 1 and 2 coming up for the Rangers. Leone Tavares. Wow, strike one. Seawalk gets a couple inches off of the outside corner there. Simeon and Seeger to follow in this inning. Rangers looking two for the tie, three for the win. It's one ball, one strike. See, it's not 97, not 98. It's kind of an upshoot fastball. He throws from a lower release, and the ball just kind of looks like it has the illusion that it's rising. And holds its plane. Ball. Oh. Similar spot to the first pitch, but a ball, and it's two and one. And that fastball, even with that very moderate velocity, has gotten more swings and misses than any fastball from any pitcher this October. Seawald's two one. 
is outside for ball three. Well, the luxury is he can come back in the zone, and certainly he wants to have the Rangers hit their way on. He doesn't want to walk the leadoff batter to start this bottom of the ninth. We're at the top of the order looming. Tavares takes ball four, and there is the dreaded leadoff walk. New third baseman in the game, Emmanuel Rivera, is taken over for Evan Longoria. So a leadoff walk from Seawald now to the top of the order, and Marcus Simeon. Well, we've talked about Simeon. Hasn't had his moment yet, right? Hasn't got locked in. Will this be his moment? Will there be a big hit here to pass the baton on? Strike one. Seawald, while he's gotten the job done pretty much every time, it has been far from perfect. It's typically some traffic, typically some nail biting. His own one. He is ripped down by and foul. And that's the area you want to stay away from, that middle end that was supposed to sweep away. He's so quick in there. Top of the zone fastball is not a strength, but right there is. Fastball. One gone in the ninth. Now this is the at bat. I was I'm I'm intrigued with this at bat and how he's going to face Corey Seager. You see the fastball that he climbed up, just tied him up. Well, we've seen Seager go after a top of the line fastball in the top of the zone, and crush it. Could tie it with one swing. Seeger has tied the game in the ninth. And now the Rangers can look to win it. Evan Carter takes strike one. Franchise changing player. Nothing in two on Carter. His first blown save of the postseason comes in game one of the World Series. The one two to Evan Carter. When you talk about getting on top of a fastball, look where that target is. Look where they were trying to get the ball, but the hitter was better. And when the pitch comes in that area, he crushed it. One, two. And we'll do it again. Carter's fouled off a few. Seawalk far from out of the woods. Facing the rookie here in Carter, who has doubled twice in this game. And Adolis Garcia is on deck. Five, five in the ninth inning of game one. One, two pitch. Got him swinging. Back to the home run. 
Well, a great player in Corey Seager. So much invested in him. And you see him against the barrel of the bat to it. And it's a no doubter. The walk, the homer, and now Mr. Excitement up who has good numbers against Seymour. Four out of ten. Adonis Garcia. Four out of ten with a home run against Seawall. Here we go. Ooh, a middle middle fastball that he took. Adolis Garcia, the biggest stage of his career, and seems to be having the time of his life. No balls and two strikes. On an 0-2, Garcia oh, got hit. Got hit by an 0-2 pitch. Now this one rode in and catches him on the top of the hand, and you just hope. He just hoped that that doesn't knock him out for any time because that is the worst place to get hit Ugh. right there. Heart and soul and engine of this Rangers team this postseason. He's also a tough guy and he stays in the game heading down there to first. Bad man as Corey Seager caught him. And so now they've got the winning run aboard, and they've got Mitch Garber coming up. You putting any thought into putting him in motion? I think the count will determine when you be aggressive. They've got to give Garber a chance on the first couple pitches, I would think, to do some damage. There he goes, first pitch, throw down, not in time. Winning run into scoring position. Luis Garcia still second. They took a book out of the Diamondbacks. And first pitch. Got a great jump. Pitch was up. I mean a cannon for Moreno, but he couldn't pick up the jump that Garcia got. And now base hit could win it for the Rangers. And as you've talked about, John, the arms in the outfield are not good. They're going to put Garber on. And Jonah Heim's spot in the order initially is now <laughs> occupied by Austin Hedges, who's about not this? made a plate appearance in this postseason. They got him at the deadline. He started five games as a catcher. He pitched in four games. Just the fun position player out there finishing games. That's how much of a role he played. But he's also been the emotional guy on the dugout and in the clubhouse that they love. There's no way that this all leads to him, is it? Austin Hedges swings and misses at a first pitch slider. First at bat in almost a month for Hedges. And he's down 0 2. He gets him and finishes off the ninth inning. But Corey Seager attacks the first pitch that he sees and ties game one, sending it to extra innings. Run in the bottom of the ninth. That is the stuff of dreams for guys who already won a World Series MVP. And now Bruce Bochy goes to his closer. This is Jose LeClerc. 
And John, uh, this postseason overall has been lacking drama. We're just waiting for the World Series, buddy. <laughs> First postseason game that goes to extras is game one of the World Series. Two, three, and four for Arizona, and a strike on Marte. Amazing. It is. This is uh, this is the kind of series I think we're going to see in just about every game. Inside. One ball, one strike. Twelve years ago today was game six. The heartbreaking one where the Rangers were one strike away. Lost to the Cardinals. A new this date in postseason history. I'm hoping it ends in a different fashion. The clerks one two. Marte bows it off. Well, this young man has been through one of the most heartbreaking losses, and I think he'll be better for it. The team survived. They won game six and seven, and in game six, he had a huge bases loaded strikeout. But who can forget the three run homer against Altuve in a game that they had won? Here, sinking line drive that is caught on the fly throws over just in case. Yeah, word is the uh, Diamondbacks tried to acquire Jose Altuve this week to face the clerk. <laughs> Mission wouldn't let it go, and so the clerk should be fine. He's given up five runs this postseason, four of them on Altuve homers. Yeah, and what I mean by that is sometimes the moment goes faster, and what you think is the right situation, you're going too fast. He threw a change up to a guy that <laughs> hadn't really had much success. Oh. Much like the ninth inning started with a walk, he had that big walk, and I think again, those moments when you survive them, you're better for it, and you learn how to deal with these kind of tight games. Moreno, clutch here, oh. here. takes a strike, one and one, and really for a lot of his career, it's been about surviving different things. Got to the major leagues in 2016, established himself, but then really struggled, and then went through injuries. And he missed almost a full season because of a shoulder injury. He comes back from that, misses a full year undergoing Tommy John surgery. You go through two years pretty much out of sight, out of mind, and then make it back to this stage in this role. Two balls and two strikes on Moreno. And he also has one of those hard to hit sliders. That one wasn't his best one. He got away with it. He also throws that changeup, but his fastball is so sneaky down in the zone, 98. And right now, he's. Probably throwing his fastball as hard as he's done all postseason with that adrenaline boost of the two run homer getting him in this game. And now the clerks 2 2. 98. Man, oh man. And this guy early on this season was throwing 94. Postseason transforms people, doesn't it? 3 and 2 on Moreno and a tie game in the 10. Okay, so he's got life on his fastball, the command not great. And he's shake, shaking his head right there because the last two sliders have spun in the zone. They need to turn the corner. You got to have touch on that pitch. You can't muscle a slider, it won't be as effective. And this is a guy who's been punishing mistakes lately. Got this fastball by him. Two gone in the top of the 10th. That is late action. Don't think for a minute that Walker wouldn't like to check in himself. Been struggling, three strikeouts on the night. Boy, yeah, he just he looks out of sorts. Chases that thing that bounces. Led the Diamondbacks with 33 home runs during the regular season. He's one of his last 18 with the three K's tonight. And a fastball sneaks right by him 0 2. Regular season, you got a man on second. Different philosophy, different swings. Postseason, you play it. And everybody's going to try to be a hero. Well, the pitchers are going to have success if everyone's trying to be the hero by swinging up and hitting a home run. Everybody's going to try. Only one guy will tonight. 5 5 in the 10th and 0 2 from Jose LeClerc. Walker flies it to center field. 
Easy one for Tavares. Let's go to the bottom of the tenth. It's low. Young and Tavares coming up. Back after a word from your local Fox station. Seager showing the emotion after a game tying home run in the ninth inning. Now his Rangers look to win it. Bottom of the tenth, bottom of the order. Nathaniel Lowe, strike one from the lefty Kyle Nelson. Kyle Nelson, when he faces left handers, going to be predominantly the slider and fastball combination. You just saw the slider. Lowe, who's got power, swings and misses, 0 and 2. We've seen guys pound low with fastballs, but a couple sweeping away from him here to put him in an 0-2 hole. Young and Tavares to follow in this inning. First extra innings game of this postseason. It's game one of the World Series. Quite a tone set. Out an 0-2 pitch. Takes it down and away. And because that was such a clean inning, I don't know if Bruce Bochy will extend his closer for two innings if they don't score here. Not even two and two. Looks like they will. Arizona at this point is already fired on its top arms, trying to protect that 5-3 lead. It's gone. 2-2. Two -two. Count goes full after it was 0-2. Well, if you throw him that many sliders, you would think he's going to get the 3-2 slider. It'd be interesting to see what they go with. Lead it off to 10th. Whoa, has taken a walk in the ninth inning. Started with a walk. The 10th inning does as well. The winning run is aboard for Texas. Now that's a prime example. I know that wasn't what he intended to do in Nelson. He threw two perfect sliders and then could not follow up anywhere close the next three sliders and it recognized as the hitter that that ball was a ball coming out of his hand. Go over there at first does not have base stealing speed. But again the arms in the outfield not a strength for Arizona man at the plate is the rookie Josh Young who's two for four in his first World Series game. off the first pitch Josh Young who they say has been training for moments like this for a lot of his life dreaming of being in the big leagues training his mind reading about psychology and mental conditioning and trying to be at his very best and the lights shine the brightest on this 0 1 pitch she takes low well 0 2 and the Rangers work to walk to lead off this inning. They have him way shifted. Obviously can't totally shift, but second baseman's almost at second base. So there's a highway on that side if he chooses to go the other way. Now on this one, one pitch, chops one to short. Perdomo's there, the second one on the first. It's a double play. Six, four, three to wipe the bases clear. That's how you take care of the leadoff walk. Two gone. They're empty for Tavares. Don't let what Leody Tavares did last inning get lost in the shuffle. His leadoff walk set up the game tying home run. Tavares, one home run in this postseason against Justin Verlander. Nelson gets the call. Arizona trying to get this game to the 11th, where they'd have Fan, Guriel, and Thomas do up. The 0 1 is outside.
One ball and one strike. Tavares couldn't lay off. One and two. He's chased quite a bit tonight. He has. He's been kind of non committed on some of those swings. He's going to use the time, gather himself here. Feels like Nathan Avaldi pitched this game like days ago. Four and two thirds, gave up five runs. His worst start of the postseason, but his offense has gotten him off of the hook. Two and two on Tavares. Well, one of the trends we talked about is going to come to an end. Uh, the Rangers scored first, they hadn't lost, and Arizona hasn't lost when they had the lead. Right. So one of those two is not going to come out on the winning end. Cal goes full. Game from behind to ahead. At least full. Top of the order and Simeon waiting on deck. On a payoff pitch to Paris. Takes ball four. His second consecutive walk in the late innings. He has the kind of speed where they could consider having him take off the same way they did Garcia last inning. Now interesting strength for Simeon on the breaking ball against left handed pitchers. It's opposite of course against right handed pitchers. But that's a strength because that ball is coming into him. And maybe a good reminder here again a pitching. Pitching coach going to go out and make sure that he understands that the trend that Simeon provides against left handed pitchers. It's been just a nightmarish postseason for Marcus Simeon, who's one of the most valuable players in the league all year. He played in every game. He led the league in hits, led the league in runs scored. That average is well below 200, though, in this postseason. Kind of guy that when he gets going, he can take off and carry you. And in a situation here where, man, with one massive swing, you could make a lot of those bad memories go away quickly. Thirty three years old in his eleventh year playing in his first World Series. Winning run aboard in the tenth inning. Marcus Simeon pulls one through the left side. There's a base hit. Winning run into scoring position and they came right into his sweet spot there Johnny. Yeah, just what I was saying and lucky the ball was on the line and not in the air because that's where he likes the ball and oh here comes that man in Seager that breaking ball is the perfect strength of Simeon and now could he do it again tied it in the ninth a chance to win it in the tenth. First pitch in the dirt. Tavares at second can really run. This game almost certainly ends on a base hit. And again, slider off a left hander is not Seeger's strength, but if he sees a lot of them, it becomes his strength. That's two in a row. So the more he sees, the more he gets familiar with that tilt and shape coming out of a left handed pitcher. Advantage goes to Seeger. On this 2 0, Seeger rounds one to second. Marte's got it. On to first and on to the 11th. Kyle Nelson ekes out of this. Three base runners in the inning, but the double play ball and the ground ball that he induces against Seeger keeps game one rolling. Likely World Series, but what a game one we've had. Corey Seeger ties it in the bottom of the ninth with a two run home run. And here we go to the 11th. Jose Leclerc stays in. The Rangers at this point have a massive advantage in the bullpen suddenly. The Arizona having fired all its top guns. And Bruce Bochy was using his behind bullpen. He can go to his top guys now. This is the second inning for his closer, Leclerc. Tommy Pham starting the 11th. And reaching out, lofting this ball to left field for Carter. 
on the first out. Well, because it was a relatively stress free inning and low pitch count, it allows Bruce Bochy to go to LeClerc, and then after this, possibly Chapman, depending on where they are in the lineup, if it matters. Then you look over at Arizona, and Castro, Frias, Nelson, and Salfrank are the only guys they have left. They've used their top four. As Guriel comes up with one away, reaches out and taps it foul. Well, in a regular season, you wouldn't be fearful of anybody you use because you got to use your whole bullpen. But then you lose favor at times when guys are not right, and so you shorten your bullpen. Even though you got the same number, you really don't in the postseason. There are guys you will stay away from based on the way they've reacted to the postseason, and the, and it's just natural. Managers. When they have a hiccup or two, they stay away from a guy until they they can't avoid it. This game may force some of those guys in, depending on how long it goes. Here's a one-one from LeClerc. Oh, Gurriel well, looks really jumpy right now. He goes around and it's one and two. And the Texas bullpen, even though Bochy was using the guys that he'd use with the team behind, you know, it was a tight game. Five and two thirds scoreless innings. That's Miguel Castro getting ready for the bottom of the 11th. Going upstairs to the one two. Well, here's what the Rangers have done a good job of when they've gotten the leadoff hitter out, there hasn't been much trouble. When the leadoff hitter has gotten on, they, of course, the Diamondbacks have been able to score, and that's really the last four innings. They've done a great job at that, have the Rangers. Dunning to Bradford, the Gray to Smith, now LeClerc. Another one two pitch. And a strikeout on that slider. Two gone in the 11th, then down to Ken Rosenthal. Joe, before the game, the Rangers offensive coordinator, Donnie Ecker, was quite concerned about the way the Diamondbacks would pitch the Rangers. He basically said most major league teams, the way they pitch, they're like NFL teams, running the same play over and over. The Diamondbacks under pitching coach Brent Strom, they are like an NFL team that runs 100 different plays with 100 different formations. They create a lot of confusion, much like they do offensively. You better be prepared for it. It took a while, but the Rangers got back. Against Seawald in the ninth inning after three relievers that put up zeros for Arizona. Now Thomas chases a change here. One ball, one strike. Two infield hits in his first World Series game. Carter, Garcia, and Garver coming up for the Rangers in the bottom of the 11th. Clerk and out away from two scoreless innings of relief. His 2 1 is popped up. Left side. Everybody hustling over there. Young the call. Young the catch to the bottom of the 11. Two scoreless innings from LeClerc. Coming up for the Rangers, bottom of the 11th. One run would win game one. It's Carter to lead off, and then Garcia, and Garver. Carter's going to get a rare chance here, Johnny. He's one for 16 against left handed pitchers. Nelson stays on to face him. Strike one. Yeah, this is the only hitter Nelson will face this inning. Uh, Castro will come in and face the right handers, but Carter's going to see that, that pitch a lot here. That's the pitch he goes to. On this so one, he takes in the dirt, and they've pinch hit for him before, but he's done enough at this point, and his defense important enough where Bruce Bochy lets it roll, lets it ride with the 21 year old Evan Carter. Grossman would be the option. One and two. Two doubles in this game. Now the Rangers got two runs in the first inning, they got one in the third, and then were silent. Until Seeger erupted this place in the ninth. For the Diamondbacks, three in the third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth. 
And then the bullpen has shut them down. Two and two on Carter. Boy, you got to throw him strikes. Well, he makes good pitches on the swings and misses, and and look, he just. He's trying to expand the zone and going lower and lower and just not coming out of his hand looking like a strike. Flies this one to right field does find the zone there and he's going to get Carter. Carroll puts it away one gone in the 11th. The Dolis Garcia is coming up and he's going to face a new pitcher. They've got Castro ready for him. Garcia after getting hit hard on the wrist his last time up. First of all it's a good sign to see him stay in. And baseball fans got to love what they're about to see coming up here. Dolis Garcia, who has owned the spotlight all October, with a chance to win it. Guys, I know one of the strongest guys I know. We have our little home run celebration we do. It's like a coming out party for him, for the world to see how good he is. El Bombi, a level bomb right here to end game one. Tied at five, bottom of the 11th, and Castro's on to face him. I'll tell you what he's shown me tonight. If I was pitching and paying attention, he's been good against sliders tonight. And this man throws a lot of sliders 40% slider, slider usage. And really, nobody's done anything against it on the year. Just a bit outside. One ball, no strikes. The Garcia, after ripping through the Astros over the final couple games of that series, has reached four times in game one of the World Series. Seven home runs this postseason. On this 1 0 pitch, takes in the dirt for ball two. Flair, drama, joy, all in one package right here. Dolly Scarcia. <laughs> Couldn't help himself. Two and one. Again, this is the tendency for most hitters. When you get in the postseason, especially when you're the home team, you just know one swing and you're dancing. You know he badly wants to be the hero. He's ahead three and one. We saw him in Houston in game six clearly wanting to be the hero after the yeah. drama of game five and he struck out four times in a row to start that game only to take a deep breath settle down and hit a grand slam in the ninth. The Dolis Garcia sends him the other way that sends Carroll back he's at the wall and the to the day that game six became synonymous with heartbreak game one becomes synonymous with Adolis Garcia the Rangers tied in the ninth on a Seager home run they win it in the 11th and of course it was Adolis run swing and they're dancing around but it was all about that hit by pitch the time before you wondered if that was going to have anything to do with his swinging the bat it wasn't and he went to right field. That's how strong he is. He took a low sinking pitch and hit it like a left handed pull hitter. And what a moment and what a comeback win for the Rangers. 
This is what I was talking about. This looked like it could have been very bad when he was hit by this 0-2 pitch earlier before this game. Right there. And that one, you thought, okay, maybe he's in a little bit of trouble. Well, not only was he not in trouble, he was completely on plane when he was swinging to hit this ball. What a moment. What a player. Michael Young, the Rangers legend, who's now a special assistant with the team, said there's nobody having more fun than Adolis Garcia. He said he's enjoying every pitch, and this time of year, the guys that do that are the ones that thrive. Yeah, and I'm telling you, from the very first at bat, he looked locked in. He took one huge swing in that at bat and almost got back to the basics of short and to the ball, and he let that ball travel, and he hit it exactly where it was pitched. And incredible stuff. He didn't think it was possible for him to do something more than he did in the championship series when he was a wrecking ball to the Astros postseason and World Series hopes. He reaches five times in game one. He ends game one with an opposite field walk off home run in the 11th inning. Down to Ken Rosenthal. Thanks Joe. With all these walk off home run. When you came to the plate, what were you thinking? Uh, I was thinking on hit a good pitch, make good or bad, and just thinking, uh, give me the, the victory to my team. When the ball went over the wall, what was your reaction? It was an exciting moment, you know. I was just looking to the dog out, look, uh, looking at all my teammates happy and, sure, you know, happy. The hit by pitch, how much did it hurt your hand? Um, just, I think he was trying to throw an inside fish, but I just, you know, I get lucky that it's nothing worse. So it wasn't painful? No. Oh. All right, the ball Seeger hit to tie the game. When you saw that, what did you think? Uh, that was the one of the best moments of the game. He tied the game. He, he fired me up, you know. Uh, I get so excited, too, and I knew we can get the win. What did this team show the Diamondbacks tonight? Uh, you know, it's going to be a really good series. Uh, we show all the team work, and we, we, we are going. Adolis, congratulations. It's your night. Back to Joe. I don't think this guy's human. What do you mean it didn't hurt? <laughs> because tonight's game ended in a walk-off, Capital One will donate an additional $1,000 to the Jackie Robinson Foundation as part of the Capital One walk-off program. To date, Capital One has donated over 750 grand to the foundation. And Adolis Garcia, just the latest in the legend of Adolis. But in the biggest stage yet, game one of the World Series ends in an Adolis Garcia home run. It took 11 innings. It took a ninth inning comeback. But it ends the way that it often has for these Rangers with that man in a starring role. The postgame shows coming up after game one after this break. Unreal.